Tick tock, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all around the world. I am your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood. And with me now, first we have shameless Sam Shimon, the Assyrian Encyclopedia. How you doing, Sam? By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, surviving and trusting that he'll fill us for his glory until we meet him. In Jesus' name, man. I'm doing good, man. All uh, right, and we also have special guest. Um, I put Anthony in the uh, in the description um, because that was that was his email. But he actually goes by Isa now because he has converted to Islam. So we'll call him Isa. How you doing? I'm doing good. Alhamdulillah. Uh, praise Allah. I'm doing great. All uh, right, and, and of course my oh, Arabic right. is not the greatest. Sorry, my, okay. we're 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 we're, we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna hold anything uh, hold anything against you. Um, yeah. because you, you, uh, I'm, you're going to share your story, but you haven't been a Muslim yeah. tremendously long. But, uh, anyway, uh, a short, short time ago, uh, we said that we were having Muhammad week and we were going to invite people of, of all levels. If scholars want to come on, scholars can come on. If, uh, imams, apologists, sheikhs, anyone wants to come on, but also if, uh, if really any Muslim wants to come on here and have a discussion, we are going to keep it friendly. And, uh, so that's what we're we are intending to do and uh isa here contacted me and said he he had converted to islam and that he'd like to have a discussion so um isa we we would all hey, be man. interested in in what, what what are you doing sam i see you no, i see I you about to freak in. out no i just want to say something i noticed because of the delay why people comment i got some of the weirdest stupidest expressions known to mankind because i just true. caught myself and I'm guys. I don't do it deliberately. I'm just weird like that. So I just caught myself, and I'm like, no wonder people think I'm weird. But go ahead. Those are when you make those dumb expressions. That's where uh, if someone wants to make fun of you, they they take a screenshot of that stupid face you're making. Like when you, especially when you when you start yelling and you go like this, and that's why. Ah, that's where you click it, and then that's the that's the picture for the thumbnail uh, criticizing. All right. Well, now that we've been rudely interrupted by Sam. Um, Isa, if you want to, I guess we, we should start from uh, anything you want to share about your family background uh, going back. So before you converted to Islam. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I begin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful God. Uh, in terms of my background, uh, it's as confusing as, as it gets. Uh, my dad's side is Maronite Catholic which is essentially a Christian group, uh, mainly in Lebanon, in the Middle East. And my mom's side is Muslim, but they're not exactly, they don't exactly practice the faith as, uh, as strictly as a norm, uh, the average Muslim uh, would. So uh, I guess in terms of my conversion, uh, do you want to know like how I like found Islam? Like how exactly should I like go about it? Just straight from the beginning, like do you want like everything? My uh, conversion. Yeah, as much. I mean, you know, we don't want you to talk for for three hours because we want to get yeah. into discussion. But if you want to take, you know, ten minutes or so to to sh to talk about, but it would be it would be two things. So if you had a, um, yeah, if you had a Catholic father, what was it? So it's kind of two things. One, what was it about Christianity or your father's religion that made you not trust that or cause doubts about that? And then second, what of, of all the things you could be, you could be an atheist, you could be an agnostic, you could, uh, you know, you could convert to anything. So why Islam? So basically those, those, those two kinds of things. Okay. Um, let's see. So I guess, to address the point, what was it about Christianity that that made me want to leave? It wasn't exactly that. I, I find nothing wrong with the Christian faith. Of course, like I, I practice it my, my whole life. I went to Catholic school my whole life, so I find absolutely nothing wrong with, with the faith. Um, I guess I was first exposed to uh, Islam when I... My sophomore year of high school, I wanted to uh, learn Arabic, to write Arabic. Um, because my family was from Lebanon, it had nothing to do with religion or anything. I just wanted to learn Arabic, and naturally, uh, I mean, the Quran is written in Arabic, so I stumbled upon the Quran. Uh, and I couldn't read much, I couldn't write much at the time, so I, I mean, I, I didn't know any better. Um, so what I did was I, I looked up a, a video on YouTube. You know, you know what? I googled it. You know, what would you do when you don't know, right? <laughs> so I googled mm -hmm. it and. 
naturally, you know, one video after another after another, and I started learning more and more, and I would I would talk to people, and amazingly enough, I actually I stumbled across one of your videos, David. Well, it was actually amazing, and I for a short period of time I. It was like I was interested in Islam, and then I watched your videos, and then I it just Islam was like a turnoff. Like that's that's not right, right? And it went on for about a year. So I was interested for a little bit. I watched your videos, and then it just set me back. Now that can't be the truth, right? And then my senior year of high school, I decided to confront my Muslim family about it, and not in a mean way, just address it, you know, because they 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 did understand the religion. So I thought I would ask them and. The, the, the first point that, that really uh, switched my, my thoughts was when I was addressing one of like the verses. Again, I don't have the exact verse, but I was, it was addressing one of the verses, uh, the violent verses about, um, like, you know, kill the unbelievers, like wherever you find them. And so I, I addressed this to my, to my aunt, and we actually ended up FaceTiming my uncle who lives in Lebanon. And his argument, was, it was very simple. He just told me, read the verse right after it. And, of course, that didn't seem very helpful but but i did it so i read the verse right after it and of course this is not word for word i sadly i didn't write that one down i should have but it was but if they desist if they end fighting then you should end fighting too because allah is the most merciful and the most forgiving so if they mm -hmm. if they stop fighting then we should stop fighting so i was like okay that's one what about what about the other violent verses so i went through them and i was like okay so i can't criticize i can't uh critique the religion based off the violence because there's always a way out, right? There's always a reason not to fight. Uh, and of course, my aunt recommended a movie called The Message. I don't know if you've seen it. So I decided to watch it. And of course, I didn't, I didn't want to just trust the movie, right? I wanted to do my own research, right? So I would take, I ended up buying the uh, Sahih Bukhari, the collection. So I started, uh, you know, comparing what the movie had to say and was that real, right? Because I'm not just going to trust what a movie creator says, right? So I wanted to test all that for myself. And I realized something very interesting. Uh, so in terms of all of these, this is just addressing the violent verses, in the Bible, not not criticizing the Bible, right? You know, I, I still... But, 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 by, by, the, by the way, Isa, feel, yes. fr feel free to criticize the Bible. We're, we're, we're obviously not made of glass, so... <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Feel free. Of course, I mean, not, not of course, sorry, but like, you know, I will feel, feel free, but in terms of, you know, what I would read in the Bible, I would read very similar things, of course, uh, not exact, but very similar things in terms of the violent verses, so I couldn't, I couldn't really call out Islam for the violent verses anymore, and then there was the question, which is the topic of today, uh, the Prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, you know, his reliability, and is he a prophet or not, which is what we're talking about today, which is, fits well. So in terms of my conversion, it was a very simple. It was a very. It was one, one fact that really made me uh, convert. And I, and I guess the 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 reasons for why I believe in Muhammad sort of, you know, uh, coincide with why I converted. So I guess if we want to go into why I believe in Muhammad, it would work the same way. Um, so if we go into these, are now the reasons why. I believe in the Prophet, peace be upon him. Now, I, I, I separate this into two categories, the, ma the major reasons and the minor reasons. The major reasons sort of, you know, umbrella over the minor reasons, so we'll get to the, the minor reasons are not as important. So if we don't get to them, that's fine. So the main reason why I believe in the Prophet, peace be upon him, is, is the same reason where well, if I were to ask you, why do you believe in Jesus, right? You can tell me all these facts and, and proofs and evidence, but at the end of the day, Although I do have my own personal proofs and, and facts. Uh, uh, Issa, Issa, one second before we go on. Um, uh, yeah? Does someone have an air conditioner on or, is, or, or are people here on my it, computer? Why is it you're the only dude that complains about stuff like this? No, I'm saying because I see people in the chat complaining about it and I and I hear it, but I don't know if they can hear it. Yeah, shut up. Okay, is man. that your air conditioner? Yeah. Man. That is very, very here, rude. Man. All right, you, Isa, do you see this? He's trying to distract people from hearing your reasons for, for Muhammad. It's all good. Just no, let him, no let, him, let him, let him, yeah, let him turn that off. And uh, it's like if if he's not talking, he has to he has to distract everyone else, so they can't uh, you know they can't understand anything. It's all, all right, right. no worries. All right, dude. Thank it's a hundred and twenty degrees here, dude. But go ahead. <laughs> all right, all, all right. right. Good, go continue. All right, so, uh, yeah, it was about faith. So if you were to ask me why do I believe in the prophet, it would be the same reason why I ask you why do you believe in Jesus. The majority, I mean, I'm sorry, the 
main reason would be faith. That's why we're all men of faith here. We all believe in God, and, and the most important part of that is faith. We have to take a, a leap of faith, right? So facts and, and evidence isn't going to get us the entire way. Uh, so, of course, I, but I had to have my own personal uh, reasons, which I'll get to. So faith is the number one. Underneath that, I have the message that he brought. Now, of course, this is not the prophet's message. This is God's message being revealed through the prophet. And, of course, the message is very simple. La ilaha illallah. There is no God except Allah. Or there's no God except God, depending on how you want to translate it. So this, I believe, when I, as a Muslim, I... I know I want to address this really quick. I still believe the Bible is the Word of God. I still believe as a Muslim, which is very interesting, I know. But I, I, I'll get to... J j j just so you know, we think you're more consistent. We think you're more consistent <laughs> with your scriptures than we think a lot of other Muslims are. In other words, if, if, we, if Sam and I were to convert to Islam, if we were to convert to Islam, then knowing what the Quran says about the previous scriptures, yeah. we would we would uh, we would be forced to reinterpret them rather than just saying they're they're not reliable because we know what the Quran what the Quran says about the earlier revelation. So we actually think yeah. you're we actually we don't think it's weird. I mean, we, it's weird in the sense that most Muslims say you can't you know you can't trust the Bible and stuff like that. But we think it's perfectly uh, you're more in line. You're more in line with yeah. what the Quran says. But go ahead. So just to uh, you know affirm that. Of course, my Arabic is not the greatest, so I'm practicing here. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nazzal alayka al-kitaba bil-haq. Musaddika lima bayna aydihi. Wa anzal turatal wal-injil. Yeah, sorry. Chapter so, 3, verse 3 and mm -hmm. 4 of the Quran. That's yes, exactly. By, by so, Hey, and, and yeah, we, we, we know you're beginning, but uh, for all the viewers right here, when the Torah and the Gospel are referred to as Baina Yadehi, these are, these are basic words. What For everyone who's watching, what does Baina Yadehi mean? Oh, you're talking to me or him? No, I'm talking, uh, I'm talking to him. Oh, yeah, okay, okay yeah. I'm waiting for him to answer. You scared me for a minute, David. You're telling me. I'm going to I'm going to be honest. I don't exactly. Know. Okay, so so okay, no 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 no. no. I, I wasn't I wasn't. Uh, I thought you were. I thought you were. Yeah, I thought you were breaking that. I thought you were breaking that down for us. This is no problem. Oh, no. So so basically, you've you you've been you've been learning the pronunciation and how to how to yeah. read how to read off the page. Yeah. Okay, you. I just wanted to point out for you Arabic speakers because the reason I thought the reason I thought you were bringing that up is because it. Uh, in trans in modern translations it doesn't it doesn't show up but that yeah. that phrase actually means between its hands or between his hands yeah. and so Baina. the yeah. yeah baina between and then yadehi uh his hands or its hands and oh, so yes. it's actually the the torah and the gospel between its hands or in its in its presence and yeah. so it actually but yeah i thought you were reading that because you just you just oh. said that you're actually uh yeah you actually yeah. believe in the in the earlier scriptures but but go ahead i'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry to interrupt Okay. No, no problem. That's what I, I. That's what I would like a discussion back and forth, back and forth. I wouldn't. Oh, you know. yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. So, um, yeah. So uh, that's interesting. Bain uh, him. So where was I? <laughs> Let's see. I think I lost my train of thought. You said, oh, yeah. You're just reciting chapter three, verses three and four, that the Quran is sent yeah. down. It's the book in truth. You're saying it's the book in truth. Yeah. So, so in terms of the Bible, um, in of course the Quran has to correspond with the Bible in order, especially for Christians and Jews to to understand it, it would have to correspond. And I believe it, I believe it does. Because in uh, Surah Al-Ikhlas, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدَ اللَّهُ سَمَدْ لَمْ يُلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوَانْ أَحَدْ It's a command from God to the Prophet, قُلْ Say, هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say, He is Allah, the One. Which affirms the, or which confirms the Old Testament, the Jewish creed in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, which I'm sure you all know. Uh, Here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So I believe, that's just one example. So I believe the message of the Quran is very similar to the message of, of the Bible, especially when it comes to the Old Testament and Jewish belief. Uh, just a side note, um, in terms of statues and idols, uh, I've recently, I've got, I've, it's not that I have a problem with the statues and, and like pictures, but in terms of the belief that we don't uh, pray towards or, or believe in like the statues, also affirms Exodus 20, verse 3 through 4. I have it written down. If you want me to read the exact verse, I have it right there. But in terms of statues, we're not supposed to carve statues of people or, or animals or things like that. 
So that's that's the number one reason, faith. I mean, sorry, faith and me- and the message. The second reason I would say is the Quran itself. So like, if I were to describe the Quran to someone, like if an alien. Yep. I lost his voice. Uh, yeah, might have had a uh, shortage in the connection here. Let's see if he comes okay. back. Okay. Isa, do you hear me? He froze. All right, I'll see what happens. Uh, let me see if I can send him a message in the chat. That's weird. We haven't had any problems with the connection before then. Um... It's probably on his end. That's not on your end. Let's see. All right, all right, Sam. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and take a couple uh, questions from the okay. chat until we get them back. Yeah, guys, go ahead. If, uh, I'm looking at the comment section. Question: Feel free to ask something because we want to be very gentle and patient with this young man. <clears throat> so, do you guys have a question that you'd like us to answer until he gets back? Because we want him to speak and feel comfortable. So, all right. Call me back if you can. All right. That's what you sent me. Um, I don't see anyone asking any question. Okay. Yeah. Sam already said that he can't control his face. All right. Anybody? No, right. no questions here. All right. I don't see any questions, folks. Okay. So no, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He sent me He sent me an email message and said his computer froze. Let me see. Um, I hope he calls back. He said he'll be back in a minute. He might okay, need to. Good. He okay, said his computer yeah. froze, so he it, that oh, might oh, be a situation oh, yeah, where he needs to shut down and, and come back. So. All right, that's fine. All right, so. Kulhu Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad. Yeah, it's shocking. He's saying that the Quran agrees with the Bible, and the Bible's word of God, so he's not going to attack it. It's that is so. So uh, so yeah, we we could actually talk about that um, for a moment. Uh, so so Sam. Uh, yes. My position, and I'm assuming that that's the same as yours, and he and uh, he's obviously going to expand upon this more, but he's claiming that. The Quran is actually the message of the Quran is actually in line with the message of the Bible, That's right, he said, yeah. and therefore he, he, this is actually the position that we would think that someone like Muhammad had that our scriptures are reliable. If we are out of whack with Islam, it's because we've misinterpreted them somehow. We're out of line with that, rather than the common Muslim understanding that uh, that Christians and Jews corrupted corrupted their scriptures. Yeah, it's, it's it's shocking he's making these admissions, and yet he still thinks the Quran is compatible with the Bible. So I'm just going to let him speak, finish, because I, that's mind-blowing to me. You say the Quran is consistent with the Bible. Anyone reading the Bible can see they're full of contradictions. But we'll let, let's let him make his case. It's kind of, you know, shocking. That is a shocking assertion, <clears throat> especially, well, yeah, well, we'll wait. He said he's going to reboot. So, guys, unless you have a question, we're just going to be here waiting patiently for this young man. You guys have any questions? Yeah. You have any questions yeah, while we're while we're waiting? He made again. We don't know what he, we don't know what he's doing. He said his computer froze, so he's going to might have to shut down or something. Um, Mirage here. He keeps asking that question. He was Mirage, asking that yesterday. Mirage here asked, uh, "Do you think the Quran can only be explained by appealing to the devil? In other words, do you think atheists would have a problem?" accounting for the Quran. And I'm guessing this is based on when uh, when Dr. Dr. Shuaib uh, Syed was appealing to, what was he appealing to? I mean, this because it was before he was talking about the yeah. mathemat- mathematical marvels. Satan cannot be against himself. Satan, his kingdom divided, cannot stand. So why would Muhammad condemn Satan in the Quran if it's a satanic revelation? Why would Satan be that stupid to have Muhammad seek Allah's protection against Satan if Satan's inspiring Muhammad? That was his objection. Well, and, and I mean, apart from that, math, math, mathematical miracles and so on. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, sounded, oh, yeah. It, it sounded like your point was best case scenario. Best case scenario. Right. If you did show yeah. mathematical patterns that could not be explained, yes. humanly speaking. Right. Now, my view is I don't think it's any kind of evidence. At all, uh, it, yeah. it's it's uh, a yeah. matter of fact. Uh, isn't there an article on Islam Q and A where they dismiss these mathematical miracles and say these don't show anything? Yeah, hundred percent. But see, the thing is, every book has mathematical patterns. If yeah. you if you do if you apply, this is not exaggeration. <clears throat> you apply that method, you'll find mathematical patterns in almost every book under the sun, not just the Quran or the Bible. So what does that prove? It just proves that language is so intricate 
that you can write sentences and create patterns unbeknownst to you. That's all it means. And what yeah. does that mean? Yeah, so basically if you want if you want to follow the if you want to follow this line of argument, then you could do that with anything. You could take a book like Moby Dick or something like that yeah. and look up how many times this word is used and how many times that word is used and how many times this word is used and how many times that word is used. And anytime you find a, a pair of words or something like that and it doesn't fit the, the pattern you're looking for, well, you just ignore that. But anytime, then when you do find the examples of when you have some... Uh, some parallel or something like that, then you start collecting those and you build up a collection of six or seven mathematical coincidences. And you say, you see, this is the, this is the amazing proof. This is the amazing proof of the religion. And uh, you, you, again, you can do this with anything. You could do it, especially if you're talking about poetry, because then, I mean, notice you could take William Shakespeare and you could do this even more. You could say, oh, look how this line parallels this line, right? Because that's how he's, that's how he's writing it. Right. He's, he's writing it to be to be structured in this way. So, yeah. So I think Sam's point, ladies and gentlemen, was Muslim. We're, we're talking Muslims and Christians. And Muhammad himself said Muhammad himself was asked, what about people who predict the future? The soothsayers. What about them predicting the future? Muhammad said, you don't believe them because because the jinn, the evil spirits are hearing Allah's plans about the future. And then they're informing these soothsayers. And then they add a bunch of lies to the truth. And so they speak something that's true about the future and then it happens but then they added all these lies to it and so according to muhammad himself <laughs> these you know demons and jinn they can actually give revelations that are amazing from our perspective and yet they're full of lies as well and so i think sam's just pointing this which i would too right so if you were to say no human being could make this okay well why does that mean it's from god Exactly. Right? You, you have to, according according to Islam, Satan himself can deliver revelations that are indistinguishable from the revelations of Allah. How do we know this? Because Satan, according to Islam, Satan revealed the satanic verses. And Muhammad himself could not tell the difference between those revelations and the revelations in the rest of the Quran. So Muhammad and all of his companions could not tell the difference between something that Satan was revealing and something that was coming uh, from Allah. And so... Yeah. All right. Let me uh, let me see if I can get. I haven't heard from Isa yet. Let me email him and see if he's uh, how he's doing real quick. Hopefully, you can get back on. You see any? You see any? Uh, no, no questions. It's just people. Well, I, 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 I also know. I, I know. I also know. I'm bad at Skype, so I just want to make sure he's not calling me and I'm somehow missing it. Yeah. Uh, was, yeah they're just on about. Uh, pineapple pizza and whether I like it or not. Do you? And no, I can't stand pineapple on huh? it. Yeah, I can't stand it. No fruit no fruit on a pizza. Huh? Alright. So he's no response from him? Um, no, I wouldn't expect one if he did ha if he did have to shut down his computer or something for uh, for some reason. Okay. Sorry guys, this is technology. We're waiting. We want this guy. I want this guy back because I want him to listen because uh, he's not so hardened. And it looks like you know if he keeps reasoning and thinking about what he believes, he'll he'll argue himself back to the truth. And by the way, uh, folks, a side note: this again is a perfect illustration. Perfect illustration of what I was talking about when people marry <clears throat> those outside of the faith. <clears throat> you run the risk when you have children that your children, <clears throat> there's no guarantee, will choose, let's say, Christianity. If you have a Christian marrying a Hindu or a Muslim, you're always taking a gamble and a risk that your children will grow up not following the true path. And we believe Christianity is true. So this is why the Bible says believers, believers who love Jesus Christ, marry fellow believers, like-minded believers, because it's hard as it is to be married to a fellow believer. Imagine an unbeliever. So, uh, Yeah, I got a message. He said he'll be back on here in a second. I'll be back when the day is and, near. Uh, and just so, just so everyone knows, um, Issa did tell us beforehand that he's got, uh, he has to go do his prayer at 9 o'clock. So he said he'll be gone um, for about 10 minutes then. And so if you guys have questions that you'd like us to address, uh, then about 9 o'clock... Well, in about uh, in about thirty four minutes, he's going to take a break to go do his prayer, and then we'll take questions. No, come back, yeah. We'll take questions yeah, from the chat. Back, yeah. All right, let's see. 
Alrighty then. I'm ask who who do I think the what was that? Someone about Iron? Hmm? Uh let me see. Someone's asking me about Daniel. Sam, who's the feet of Iron and Clay and Daniel? Who's the feet of Iron Clay? And Daniel. The hmm. feet of Iron Clay. Hmm. Do I get multiple choice? Uh, you asking me about end time prophecy? We can't even figure out the plain teachings of scripture when it comes to doctrine. You wanted to ask me about prophecy about future events how interpreted see this is what the christians like hey, tell me about the prophecy the microchip it's like y2k remember the y2k scare yeah it's the end it's the end i said 2000 the world's going to end man we're the end christ right here i mean come on man let's focus on <laughs> learning what the bible teaches how to live and what to believe let's for learn that how to live what to believe and then we'll worry about the future when it unfolds right Sam, that message was for me. Oh, okay, I didn't know that, Jessamyn. Good, I hope you, uh, you know, that reached you. Because there's so many people, Jeroboam, man, can you tell me what? Let's focus on what we're supposed to believe, why, and how to live for the glory of Jesus Christ. We don't do enough of that. In fact, most of us here, when we're asked pressing questions about the core doctrines of Christian faith, are we ready to answer from Scripture? So why worry about the statue and the feet of iron and clay when you should worry about What's the best arguments to show that Jesus is God in the flesh, that God is triune, the Bible is the inspired, inerrant, authoritative word of God, and how am I supposed to live? Is he back? Hopefully. Yeah, now you're frozen. Yeah, hello? Yes, am I? Uh, <laughs> now Sam Shamoon is frozen. I, I'm okay. I seem like it's a bad Yeah, that was very strange. Uh, am, am I frozen or anything? Can you hear me no, fine? No, you're, you're fine. Now <laughs> Sam's frozen. I don't know if I should uh -huh. just wait and let it fix. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. if I, because he's making a really dumb face. Oh my goodness! You see your face. You see your face, Sam. Yeah, I see my face. <laughs> <laughs> so you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, can yeah, we hear, hear you. you fine. What do you want to do? You do you want to wait and see if you correct, or do uh, you want to hang up and call back? What do you think? Should I hang up and call? Well, back? we're 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 more interested in talking to uh, okay, to Lisa him, here. Yeah, talk. let him let him talk, and guys, just understand that is not Sam. Oh, there. You're, you're good now. You're good. Yeah, All right, we're back go. to normal. Yeah. See, That's these it. things were... These Pray things... for the connection. That's Satan. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please, Lord, be glorified. Okay, go ahead, man. I want to hear you. All that. right, now we were we were on, unless we talked about something after yeah. this, uh, Issa was saying that he has, uh, you know, he, he views the earlier scriptures uh, as, um, as, as still giving the same message that Islam gives, and he gave a couple of examples, and you were talking about... Um, statues and then i don't remember what you talked about after that you were talking about statues. Yeah. but go ahead oh i was i mean i don't know when i cut off but i was saying uh in terms of no statues or, or like pictures the bible says something very similar in exodus 20 uh three through four uh in terms of like don't carve statues out of like people or animals i don't know exactly what it says but i know in general it says something about statues and how we shouldn't uh, make them or like pray to them. But now, by, by, the, by the way, Isa, uh, anytime you want a reference, keep in mind you've yeah. got you've got the Assyrian <laughs> Encyclopedia right here. Anytime you want, you say, say "Hey, true. hey, Sam, what's the reference on this?" And bam, he'll just fire it right back at you. It's very true. Uh, let's see. So that was my first main point with, of course, with faith and the message sort of being one. Um, my next point would be, of course, when it comes to the message, it would be the Quran, of course. So. Um, if I were to explain the Quran to somebody who, who's never heard of it before, uh, I would say, of course, it's more than this, but to, to dumb it down, I would say it's it's holy poetry in a way, of course, and I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. But when the Prophet would, would, would give would receive the messages and he would give them to people, they even, the Quran addresses, the, the people would call the Prophet a poet. Of course, the Quran in chapter 37, verse 36, God says, and for their saying, are we just supposed to leave our gods for this crazy poet? That's what they said. They would they would call him a, a poet. Um, and what I mean by poetry is, I'll, I'll give you just a quick example in uh, Surah Maryam, uh, chapter 19, uh, the chapter of Mary. Uh, if I were to read, uh, I will go to towards the end. This is verse... Chapter 19, verses 88, I mean, yeah, 88 through 95. Every time I put my, like, finger up, that is the end of the verse. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm hmm Okay, so, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَقَالُوا تَخَدَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَا لَقَالَ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا تَكَادُ السَّمَاءُ 
تكاد السماوات يتفطرن منه وتنشق الأرض وتخر الجبال حدا أن دعوا للرحمن ولدا وما ينبغي للرحمن أن يتخذ ولدا إن كل من في السماوات والأرض إلا آت الرحمن عبدا لقد أحصاهم وعدهم عدا و كلهم آتيه يوم القيامة فردا. So and that's just a short example. The entire chapter of uh, Surah Maryam will either end in alif or uh, well, it will end in, in alif, but it will either be accompanied by another letter, like for example, Sharkiya uh, or Basharan uh, Sawiya. So the entire chapter, as we see, uh, would would rhyme. And of course, this isn't like solid proof, like. This is the truth. This this is more so um, uh, when I would refer to it as as poetry. This is why I would do so. And when it comes to uh, that same idea, I of course when I would read when I would read the Bible, I would find there there's two different uh, ways it would be written. There would be like a narrative, uh, you know, like the the Torah. It would be more so like a story. I don't know if you could see that, but it would be more so. It would be like a story. It'd be a narrative. And then when you get to the prophets, it's it's a, it's written a little bit differently, right? We have instead of like a narrative, you have this like uh, short bursts and short verses of almost look looking like poetry, but not exactly, right? It would be sh short little uh, verses that don't necessarily have to do with the one behind it. So, for example, this is just off the top of my head. Uh, let's see if I can find one. So, like. They say, this is uh, Isaiah 21, verses 5, and I'll do part of 6, right? So they set up the table, spread out the rugs. They eat, they drink, rise up, O princess, O princes, oil the shield. That's 5. Then 6 would be, for thus says the Lord to me, and then it would say his revelation, right? So what I mean by, uh, when, when I compare the Quran, I would most relate it to the book of the prophets, like Isaiah and Zechariah and, and Jeremiah and all of them. That's how I see the Quran. Like if, if it wasn't written in in this sort of uh, Uthmani script, Arabic, I, I could envision it exactly in the same way the book of Isaiah would be written, if that makes sense. Those short little uh, verses that almost seem like they would be poetry, of course, but it's more than that. So... What I want to talk about specifically is how the prophet received these revelations. So, since I'm not at my home, uh, I have it memorized. This is uh, Sahih Bukhari, uh, I think it's Hadith number two. Uh, somebody asked the prophet, how, how do these revelations come to you? How do you receive, how does the angel Gabriel visit you? Right? Uh, and he mentioned that it's more than one way. Right? The first way, he described it as a ringing bell in his ear. Uh, I would only assume this would be a direct uh, communication through his ear. The second way he said is uh, dreams, which we know uh, I will get to later. So, you know, he'll have like prophetic dreams. And the third way he said, which I find very interesting, is the angel Gabriel would come to him in the form of a human being, give him the message, and then when, when the message is well received, the prophet understands what he said, then the angel Gabriel would, would disappear essentially. So what I find very interesting, and what was really a good proof for me, my for my solid faith, was when I would read, uh, I wanted to investigate this, right? Because if Muhammad was a prophet, he would have to correspond with, with the Old Testament prophets, right? Because this is exactly, he's claiming to be the, the seal of the prophet. So he must, he in order for him to be a prophet, he has to correspond, he has to agree with all of them. So... When I would look at how did the Old Testament prophets receive their revelations, right? How did they receive their revelations, right? When we open up to Isaiah in the beginning, what's the first statement? It says, this, this, the following is the vision of the prophet Isaiah, right? Or when we would read uh, in Daniel chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, the angel Gabriel came to Daniel in the form of a man. And the, angel Dan the prophet Daniel described the angel, right? I don't have the exact in my head, but he described the angel as something, you know, magnificent, of course. Uh, and then, of course, in Genesis 19, uh, verses 3 and 4, God sent two angels to Abraham in the form of men during uh, when they were in Sodom and Gomorrah. And then, of course, in the Quran, chapter 19, verse 17, the angel Gabriel came to Mary in the form of a man to 
uh, tell her about Jesus. Now, um, it all, of course, we know Joseph in the Old Testament had prophetic dreams. So there we know that's, that's uh, two out of the three ways the prophet received his revelations. We have prophetic dreams, and we have uh, the angel Gabriel or some angel coming to the, pr the prophets in the form of a man or a human being. Now, in terms of the, the last one with the, the prophet described it as a ringing in his ear, I, I don't know exactly what that means, so it's hard for me to go back to the Bible and find that. So I, I be honest, I don't know what that means. I, I can only assume it's God speaking to him through his ear. Of course, that's just my interpretation. I don't know the truth, of course. Only God knows. But uh, in terms of his reliability as a prophet, I see it as corresponding with the Old Testament ones. Old Testament prophets. Um, now, the Quran, it, what really sealed the deal for me, it, was, it, it makes me smile sometimes because when I read it, like when I, I like to compare Isaiah and, the, and Muhammad. That's what I like to do. And when I read the book of Isaiah, this is one example. Isaiah 42, verse 5, the Lord says that uh, he created the heavens and then he, he spread them. Right, and then he created the earth, and then he spread the earth. So this this kind of uh, tone that God, is, you know, his his sort of the way he's speaking, right? It's very similar, especially that same verse with Cor with the Quran in eighty eight twenty, when God is saying, "Do the people not see that how we created the camel? Do the people not see how we uh, created the sky and how we raised it?" And then God says, literally almost the same exact thing: "Do the people not see the earth?" how we spread it. So when I see the way God talks in the Bible, it's very similar to the way God speaks in the Quran. This, so, But not, not just the Bible, the entire Bible. I would say the book of the prophets, because of course a lot of the Bible is narrative. It's a story. But when I look at the, uh, uh, especially the book of the, the, the prophets, I see that it's very similar to, to what Muhammad was receiving. And I gave a perfect example in uh, Surah 40, I mean, sorry, <laughs> that's funny, Isaiah 42, verse 5, and Surah 88, verse 20, where God is saying the same thing. He created the, the heavens, and then he spread it, and then he created the earth, and then he spread the earth. Of course, this is not to be taken literally. This is why I describe it as poetry in a way. It's a way God is uh, delivering the message in, in a certain way where we can all sort of... It's, I wouldn't say it's fact because, of course, I mean, only God knows. The earth, I believe, when it wasn't created, I don't believe it was ex literally spread, right? Of course, the Bible says the same thing. He created the earth and spread it. The Quran would say, says the exact same thing. Do the people not see how he created the earth and then spread it? So very similar. And, of course, my one of my favorite uh, uh, Quran verses, uh, Surah Hadid. Uh, verse 4 uh, So he It is he who created the heavens and the earth In six days right? So as we can see in, in the Bible It corresponds exactly with that God, uh, it gives it the detail even On the first day he did this On the, on the first day he, he said let there be light And he created light So it's very similar Now the uh, When people would say it is the prophet in the Bible I it would be difficult for me to say, but in reading Isaiah, I found only one really good example. But even that, only God knows at the end of the day what this verse is about. But I do know, if if I'm wrong, I would love to be corrected. I really don't know. But for me, in Isaiah 42, uh, let me pull it out really quick so I don't quote anything wrong. Um, Isaiah 42, it's... Of course, we know Isaiah predicted Jesus, uh, and I believe he, he predicted many other uh, prophets and, and events that were to take place. But one of the very one something that's interesting is I believe he even predicted the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, the title of the chapter is uh, "The Servant of the Lord," right? And God says in the beginning, He says, "Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I I am pleased." So just from my personal experience from reading the Quran, whenever God would talk about the Prophet specifically, he'll either address him uh, as the Nebi. Uh, yeah, you will, uh, I don't want to say anything wrong. I believe he addresses him as Nebi, O Prophet, right? Or he'll address him as his uh, Ab Abdahu, his, uh, Abdihi, his slave. Of course, my Arabic is not the greatest, so if I'm wrong, please correct me. But he addresses him as his slave. 
So God says, here is my, here's my servant. In Arabic, slave and servant is the same word. So here is my slave whom I uphold, my chosen one in, in whom I am, I am pleased. And of course, one of the names of Muhammad is Mustafa, chosen one. So here, God is saying, he is my chosen one, Mustafa. Now, it's interesting what I, proof was right here. When uh, God said, let the, let the city, let the cities cry out in the villages where Kedar dwells. And in this very Bible, I have to find it somewhere on the bottom in one of the footnotes. It says who Kedar, who they are. It's the Arabs. So he's saying, let the Arabs, let the place where the Arabs dwell rejoice. And then it says, let the inhabitants of, of Salah rejoice. And of course, there's a, the Mount Salah in uh, Medina. So... This could really only be talking about the prophet because there is no other Arab prophet besides Muhammad, peace be upon him. So this couldn't be talking about Jesus. It, it, I mean, un, I mean, unless Jesus is Arab, but he's he's not. He's uh, he was a Jewish. Uh, he he lived in Palestine or Israel uh, at the time. So this couldn't be talking about Jesus. It had to be talking about an Arab prophet, and the only Arab prophet is Muhammad. So for me. I believe uh, that is the only place I find Muhammad in the Bible, uh, but not, of course, not by name. Now, the last point this is the last point of the major points, uh, his relation to Abraham. Now, I know I've talked to many Christians. They, they, don't, they don't believe that the descendants of Ishmael are, are considered legit, legitimate, but you can hear my case. So Abraham, him and Sarah couldn't have a child, so he went through Hagar. In the Bible, he marries Hagar and has Ishmael. So he's married to her. That's his second wife. And then he has Ishmael, which means that Ishmael is not some sort of illegitimate son. It's, it would be the son of Abraham. And then he had Isaac, of course. And then all the, the, uh, uh, all the children of Israel, Israel meaning Jacob, all the children of Jacob, Coming down you know, to the house of David, all the way down to Jesus. So Jesus is related to Abraham. And of course, I'm sure you know this very well. Uh, Jesus related to Abraham. You can, it can be used in any way you want. Noah related to Abraham. Moses related to Abraham. They're all related to Abraham. So when you look at the prophet, he could not be a prophet if he's not related to Abraham. So in the Bible, I believe, when God, uh, when God says to uh, Ishmael and Hagar, I will make of you a great nation, and I will give you descendants numerous as the stars. The same covenant that God gave uh, Abraham and Isaac, I believe that Ishmael is, uh, is a legitimate uh, descendant of Abraham, which is important because you can't have uh, the prophet, peace be upon him, unless he's related to Abraham. So I believe that the, all the Old Testament prophets, and of course the New Testament with Jesus, are all related to Abraham, meaning they're, they're good, they're eligible. When it comes to the prophet, peace be upon him, he has to be related to Abraham, which I believe he is, the ch uh, he's a child of Ishmael. And of course the uh, Old Testament prophets are the ch uh, children of uh, Israel, right? So you have children of Israel, Old Testament prophets, children of Ishmael, uh, the prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, peace be upon him, and that which means they're all related to Abraham, which means he is eligible to be a prophet. And of course, those are all my major reasons. I have three minor reasons, but just to save time, um, any point you guys want to address? Yeah. Now? How about uh, how about we discuss a few of these points because we know yeah, that yeah. you we know that you have to take a ten minute break. You said in about fifteen minutes. So uh -oh. yeah. how about we talk about a couple of the points you just made, and then yeah. we can continue that after you get back, and then you can go in uh, into yeah. the minor reasons. Does that work? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. I have a quick question though. Um, sure. Sure. So like when you, when you guys are addressing my points, uh, I don't want to like interrupt and be rude. Like if. If I if I want to like quickly like add something, feel free I, feel free yeah, to yeah, yeah. feel I'm free here. to interrupt yeah, us, yeah. right? Okay. So it's, it's I, different different rules different rules for you know for for, for different people, but you know you're not uh, you're not trying to shout anyone down. So if you want to interject <laughs> something, then we're not going to we're not going to interpret that as an act of aggression. Right. Sounds so, good. All right. So, so time's fleeting. So should we ask? Yeah, so yeah. Oh, Sam, of course I I have time after after the yeah. break. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. We'll we'll continue. We'll continue. All right. So Sam. Um, yes. Let's uh, yeah. uh, let's go ahead and start out with Isaiah forty-two. Can even before that, that's related to my question mm -hmm. because Isaiah forty-two said Kedar. 
So uh, this is going to be related. So you want me to follow this path, or if you want to well, stay it, with Isaiah it, because it's, it, it's basically uh, there are two things. One that that the message of Isaiah 42 is um, is in line with Islam, and therefore, and and so these these are kind of related points. One yes. that. Uh, that uh, Isa here said that the the prophets have to, you know they're supposed to be in line with each other. So Muhammad's supposed to be in line with these mm -hmm. prophets, and so Muhammad would obviously need to be in line with sure. Isaiah. And then we have the points about um, about Isaiah 42 and this not referring to Jesus, but referring to an Arab prophet, uh, more likely yeah. Muhammad. So we have that issue, and then we have the issue of uh, of Abraham and Ishmael, and so on. Yeah, let, let me tie in with Kedar with Abraham Ishmael. Now uh, Isa. Can you show yes. me in the Quran? Show me in the Quran where it says Ishmael or Abraham, they're the ancestors of Muhammad, or where it says that Kedar is the ancestor of Muhammad. Can you show me that Muhammad okay. is an Ishmaelite from the okay. Quran? Yeah, uh, from the Quran I cannot because at the end of the day the Quran is the message to to us, right? But what okay, I so can let me find... just interject real quickly. Yes, the Quran also gives you the genealogy of people because if you go to okay. chapter three of the Quran, verses thirty three. You read all the way down. It says that Mary is the daughter of Imran. Her mother is the wife of Imran. Jesus is the family from the family of Imran. So the mm -hmm. Quran does give you the family tree. So, but you okay. can't find in the Quran, right? That yeah, Muhammad I is Ishmael, right? do not believe so. No. Okay, now because you're going to go to the Hadith. Now this is going to go back to Genesis. The same Genesis in Genesis 21, 21. This is why I want you to follow with me. Okay. The same Genesis in Genesis 21, 21 says that. Ishmael's mother settled. They settled in the wilderness of Paran. Mm -hmm. She went to Egypt. She went to Egypt and got him a wife. If you're going to go to the Hadith, which is about 100 years after the death of your prophet, the Hadith contradict Genesis 21, 21, because it says that he married a woman from the tribe of Jurhum. So since you went to Genesis to prove your point, can you show me in Genesis that Ishmael had an Arabian wife, a wife from the tribe of Jurhum who were Arabs, as opposed to a wife from Egypt, because he had no Arabian wife, his wife was Egyptian. Okay. Uh, well, first off, God knows. God knows what really happened, of course. But yeah, as you said, the Bible says one thing, and the Hadith say another. And of course, in history, you can't have both. So one is wrong, and one is right. And I, I'm I'm an honest man, and that's where it all comes down to to faith. Of course, right? So that's whether you want to believe it. one is right and then one is wrong. Now, I'm not saying the, the complete Bible is wrong, right? But what I am saying is, uh, we know the Hadith. There are certain Hadith that are very authentic, and then you have those that are not. Now, I don't know the, uh, the authenticity of the one you quoted, and yeah. uh, even if it is uh, authentic, of course, people make mistakes. Bukhari. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's from Bukhari, uh, so you don't get more authentic. But remember you yeah. said, Isa, remember you started it. I'm going to repeat your words. Yeah. The Quran, Quran, Quran has to correspond to the Bible. Now you're saying, yeah. now you're questioning its authority. But you said it has to cor correspond to the Bible. So we can't say the Bible's wrong if the Quran has to correspond to the Bible. So is there anywhere in Genesis, which you refer to, because you use Genesis to prove that <clears throat> Ishmael has is part of the covenant there's a blessing for yes. ishmael and that extends to muhammad where does it say ishmael married an arab he married an egyptian and muhammad doesn't have egyptian blood does he well it's it's important to understand that okay well you addressed a lot let me let me see how i want to answer this okay so it's important to understand that in terms of the covenant why do i believe ishmael is part of the covenant because he was he was circumcised first and the sign of the covenant is circumcision right so he was circumcised first and i believe uh, in terms of uh, ishmael marrying an egyptian now i know today egypt is an is an arab country but of course it's not it's an arab majority country but it's not in uh it's not in arabia right so um in terms of ishmael marrying a, an egyptian uh i don't it, of course i i wouldn't know how to answer uh That's that fine. but but my my interpretation would be I wouldn't see how uh, that would affect his direct line because it doesn't matter who Ishmael's marrying, it's still, but whoever whatever kids he has, it's still the lineage, still the same line. Yeah. It affects it because it shows that Ishmael had nothing to do in in siring <clears throat> Muhammad being the ancestor because Ishmael was not in Mecca, he didn't marry an Arab. He was in the wilderness Paran, and geographically, that's by Egypt and Canaan. It's not in 
Mecca or Medina, yeah. and he married an Egyptian. So that's why I'm still waiting for the proof that there's some okay. concrete proof before the Quran, before Islam, that said Ishmael went to Mecca, married not just okay. one, but two women from the tribe of Jurham. But now you mentioned circumcision. And this is what I tell people. We can't have our cake and eat it too. In Genesis 17, the very chapter you cited to prove that Ishmael was circumcised first says there's no covenant with Ishmael. That's the same chapter. That was Genesis 17. I'll give you the reference. So wait, you want to write it down? Yeah, write wait. it down because I'm going to read it for you. Genesis okay. 17. Go to okay. Genesis 17 because that's where it says Ishmael was circumcised. Okay. So go to Genesis 17 from verses 9 to 14. Mm -hmm. Genesis 17 verses 9 to 14. There it's we're told Ishmael was circumcised, but let's finish it. I'm going to read now for you 15 okay. to 21. I'm going to read that because you refer to it. I'm just going by what you're referring to. Yeah, okay. In Genesis 17, 15 to 21. I'm going to read it for you slowly. Mm -hmm. So we start at 15. Read with me. What translation are you reading? Let's see. Uh, this this is a New American Bible. I don't know if that's okay. St. Joseph edition. It's, it's okay, a very, let me uh, get that for you. I'll read it for you because I want to read okay. the same Bobby. Hold on. Let me get there. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Let me just get there. Right now. Let me get there. It's right there. Okay. God further said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, do not call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her, and I will give you a son by her. Her also will I bless. She will give rise to nations, and rulers of peoples will issue from her. Abraham fell, fell face down and laughed, and he said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? Can Sarah give birth at 90? So Abraham said to God, if only Ishmael could live in your favor. God replied, even so, your wife Sarah is to bear you a son, and you shall call him Isaac. It is with him that I will maintain my covenant as an everlasting covenant and with descendants after him. Now as for Ishmael, I will heed you. I hereby bless him, and I will make him fertile and will multiply him exceedingly. He'll become the father of 12 chieftains and i will make of him a great nation but the same chapter mm -hmm. my covenant i will maintain with isaac whom sarah shall bear to you by this time next year so the chapter that you referred to where ishmael circumcised it says the covenant is with isaac and his descendants not with ishmael i'll make him a great nation but the covenant is not with him okay so do you accept this well i i mean i was wrong of course uh i made it's a mistake okay. but i do have a point though so so this covenant can you refresh my memory this is the covenant uh of the nation the covenant of, where god would make abraham a great nation give him yes. the land of canaan through which god's blessings to bless all yes. the nations would come through and he says it's with isaac and his descendants so okay it says right there in that chapter yeah yeah so that's um that would be for the land of of uh canaan is that's that's correct right the not, land of canaan. not only that no no Okay, the what's... covenant includes part of the blessing, the land of Canaan, okay. but it's more than that. It is the laws and the blessings that would okay. come to the nations would come through Isaac's seed, and that's yeah. fulfilled in Jesus. So, but there is no covenant with Ishmael because you're saying there is. He says no. The covenant was Isaac, not with Ishmael. Okay, yeah, that, that's good that we pointed that out. So, um, the covenant of that that's explaining that the prophets come through through uh, Isaac's line is essentially what you're saying. When well, it more comes, than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And more yeah. than that, of course, that, that's that's one of the points. That is, ju but just because there isn't a covenant with Ishmael, does, does that necessarily mean a prophet can't come out of that line? Yeah. You know? no, I'm, I'm just addressing what you said. Yeah, you said the I covenant know. includes Ishmael, but so now we agree there's no covenant. Yeah, okay, Ishmael, I ma right? yeah, I made a mistake then. Okay, You're, that's fine. Right. You don't need to. Yeah, yeah so uh, I, I actually, actually, I'd like to, Sam, what is your view on I mean, I, I believe God could send a prophet anywhere he wanted in the world, but sure. if we're talking about why specifically we should believe in Muhammad, then one of the common reasons is that he is some somehow fulfilling this covenant with Abraham through Ishmael. Yes. And so there are two there are two main questions. One, um, is Muhammad actually can he actually trace his lineage back to Ishmael? And two, does Ishmael have anything to do with the covenant? Because I mean, there there, yeah. are, to, there are tons That's and right. tons and tons of descendants of Ishmael. Not you know, it's it's not like all these guys could could raise their hands and say, "Hey, I'm a prophet because I'm I'm from yeah. Ishmael." And so you got those two things. One is Muhammad actually from Ishmael, and two, what exactly would that have to do with with him being a prophet? So yeah. those are kind of the kind of the main issues we're we're focusing yeah. on as far as this one is concerned. But what what are you what are your thoughts on this, Isa? I was gonna say. Uh, I know in the beginning of Matthew, it gives the genealogy of Jesus from, I believe, I believe Abraham to Jesus, but I believe it's Abraham to Jesus. So my point was, I know that 
the prophets are related to each other. That's why I brought up the point of, of Abraham. So again, this is just another one of the steps of faith. Now, the the Hadith say one thing about Ishmael, and the Bible says one thing about the another thing about Ishmael. So this is just another leap of faith. Of course, not not everything not everything in religion can be uh, confirmed with facts. Of course, we all know that we're all men of faith, so we know that some things require a leap of faith. And I guess in my circumstance, I would I would believe the Prophet just based on his my own belief and his trustworthiness with other stories i would have to go with that one but if, i'm not necessarily yours is wrong it's just my personal leap of faith would have to be with that one but of course there's no uh there's no nothing wrong or nothing who no one knows what really happened uh we're all well, just reading text on a page we don't really know exactly what happened only god knows what happened so yeah, this, no, Issa, uh, Issa, let no, you want it. Remember, you began, you recited chapter 3, verses 3 to 4 of the Quran, where it says, We sent down to you the book in truth, mm -hmm. confirming, you said, Musaddiqin, Lima Baina Yadeya. And we asked you what that meant. It meant that mm -hmm. the Quran confirms what is between his hands. And then it mentions the Torah and the Gospel. So it's not simply we do not know. Yeah. Muhammad is saying that he's confirming the scriptures of the Jews and Christians. So that's why you said earlier, the Quran has to correspond to the Bible. Yeah, but, simply say he's a prophet. Sorry. I just want to make this point. Yeah. That he's a prophet. You believe in him. Well, you know what? Why don't you follow Joseph Smith? He claimed to be a prophet. Uh, can, wait, can I answer him really quick? Yeah, uh, why don't he? Yeah, Joseph Smith, He's a. he came after Muhammad. He came with the Book of Mormon. He's yeah. a prophet. And he claims that even an angel came to him named Moroni. So do you believe him and follow him? If not, why? I'll, I'll explain. Uh, I, I lost my train of thought. Can you quickly repeat? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> confirming. Uh, confirming the previous scriptures. So in terms of that... The um, you said that when uh, the the story of Ishmael marrying uh, somebody else that, that that the Bible has is that in the Quran or the Hadith? That's the Hadith. The Quran doesn't even say Ishmael is okay. the father. Okay, so of so it so in terms of that specific topic, the Quran doesn't really. Uh, what do I always say? Go against that. But mm -hmm. I actually would want to address this now. The in terms of the, when the Quran goes against biblical stories i don't believe the bible was corrupt i don't believe i don't believe it was uh okay. and i don't how do i want to word this i don't believe it was changed and, and especially i don't believe it was changed on purpose right but i do believe that there's a difference between the stories in the quran and the stories in the bible i believe the stories in the bible would would be the stories through not through human lens but but through the one through god's lens essentially now I know the Bible, the Quran, the the Bible is divinely inspired, right? Written by man, but God inspired it. So at the end of the day, it is still written by God. But I believe the Quran's version of these stories, if you will, are are the stories through God's through God's vision, like th how He saw the story. Of course, God doesn't make any mistakes, and I believe so, and, and subtle changes. For example, I have an, I have a good example in uh, Exodus, the in the story of you know. Um, when they visited, when they went to Pharaoh's court, the mm -hmm. Bi the Bible says uh, Aaron threw the staff and it became a snake and you know yada yada yada. That's that's Aaron did that, right? But the Quran, it's given to Moses. Moses threw the staff and it turned into a snake and you know that whole story. So in terms of well, which one was it? Right? It can't be both. Uh, as a someone as a Muslim who is taking another leap of faith, I would say for me personally, the stories. That the Quran gives, I would believe as what what happened, right? But that's not necessarily saying that the Bible is wrong, right? Yeah. Because the Quran even says, if if God wanted to, He could have guided you ejma'in, He could have guided you all together, but He didn't. He separated us into religions, and He did it on purpose. So whatever is, nothing happens without God's permission. Whatever's in the Bible was meant to be there, and whatever's in the Quran is meant to be there, and we we should not. Uh, uh, Look at these differences as a way of condemning each religion. We should look at these differences and we should uh, compare them and learn and learn each other's perspective. Right. The only only sense. one thing. Go ahead, Dave. You want to say something? Because I've been. Oh yeah, something. yeah. I just wanted uh, kind of in a uh, in uh, Isu's defense here, and I know he has to he has to take a break for prayer. Okay, um, yeah. But yeah, I just yeah, want, I just wanted to say a couple words in in in, in his in, kind of in defense on, on this. But um, when he's talking about leap of faith, I, I, w I would say this: if you have good reasons to believe in Muhammad, then if if you know that 
Muhammad somehow claimed that he's of the of the line of Ishmael and, and you couldn't defend that from the Bible, you couldn't show that, then I would say, okay, well, I have these other good reasons and therefore I can trust Muhammad on yeah. what I can trust what he says, even though I can't make sense of it. So in that sense, that, that in that sense, it's perfectly acceptable to have a leap of faith. A leap of faith is weird when there's no evidence pointing any way in, in any direction. You just say, yeah. "I'm going to go ahead and, and believe this." But you know, we, we would we would there would be certain circumstances where we would say, you know, we don't understand this passage in the Bible, but you know, if Jesus said it, then you know we believe in Jesus because he rose from the dead. Therefore, yeah. we believe it. But I, I will I will say this, Isa. You were laying out your reasons for belief in Muhammad, and you gave this as one of your reasons for belief in Muhammad. Upon closer examination, it looks like okay. Well, it doesn't actually line up the way I think it did. So therefore, I'll have to I'll have to have a you know leap of faith on this issue. Uh, but th so then the, the issue would come down to if you're taking a leap of faith on this issue, if you're trusting that Muhammad is right and that Islam is right, then you would still need some other reasons. Otherwise, it's just leap of faith in the dark. It's just leap of mm -hmm. leap of faith in the in the dark. Um, now, now, did, did you, by the way, you know, There's it's, 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 it's nine oh three. Did you want to take this? By the way, I, I everyone, uh, uh, I told Wait. Isa, I told Isa, he, he he asked if he could eat. He, he asked if he could if he could eat <laughs> during the live stream. Give me that. I said, I said no problem. <laughs> do you need to go pray and come back and we'll resume? I, I yeah, I guess I can do it now and just get it out of the way. Okay. I will be right okay, back. Good. All right, you'll, you'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't give me permission to eat. I don't like that. All right, but anyway, uh, yeah, just uh, let me let me share some with the, you guys that are in the comment section. I don't know if you guys know what compassion and mercy is. I had somebody complaining. I'm really slow. What do you want me to do? You want me to go and decimate a kid? What's wrong with you guys? Yeah, what's wrong I with mean, you? I mean, look at these guys. He's a young man. Yeah. He is. He's on a journey. Mm -hmm. His journey isn't over with. I guarantee you, in time, he's going to come and give his life to Jesus Christ. And you guys want me to go and go for the juggler, dude? Come on. Yeah. What's wrong with you guys? Yeah, got, uh, uh, Sam. Man. Sam, man, along, along these along these same lines, because it's the same it's the same thing with everyone. There there can only be one relationship between yeah. a Christian and a Muslim. You have to you just have to jump all over him and demolish him. I, I want to say yeah. to all the people who have that view, you know, I was friends with Nabil Qureshi for four years before he converted. If I'd had the attitude of a lot of these people that in, in our first discussion, in my first discussion with Nabil, we wouldn't have had a second discussion. There would have never been a second discussion. Maybe I, maybe I would have demolished him in that first, in Nabil, in that first discussion, but there wouldn't have been a second discussion. You know what I did in my first discussion, ladies and gentlemen? I sat there basically listening for like eight hours. I would, I would raise, I would raise objections. I would raise points and so on. But basically I let Nabil tell me everything he believed about everything. What do you believe about the Bible? What do you believe about Jesus? What do you believe about the Quran? What do you believe about Muhammad? What do you believe about God? What do you believe about salvation? I want to sit here and hear it all. Um, following the method of a lot of Christians, you know, as, soon as, as soon as Nabil says one thing that I disagree with, I'm supposed to yeah. just jump all over him. How dare you say this? And then and then get into a shouting match, and then he never wants to talk yeah. to me again. Unbelievable. Uh, look, this is as Sam's pointing out, right? This is a this is a, a a pretty new convert. If he gets something if he gets something wrong, great. I, it would be it would be borderline miracle if he was saying things that, and he was right and had airtight arguments, right? So we yeah. so we're we're patient enough. We want to. I'm interested in his story. When I hear, when when someone tells me, "Hey, you know, I converted to Islam," I'm interested in, "Hey, tell us why? Why? Because you're going to see it over and over again, ladies and gentlemen. You notice the patterns. You notice. You notice. You find the same uh, patterns over and over again. Go ahead, Sam. Uh, and on top of that, how many of the so-called Muslim apologists had the guts to show up on the stream? Yeah. Had the courage. Here's a young man. What? He's 21 now. Oh, he said it was around 21, I guess. I, I think don't know. Uh, they might be 19. Okay. I think 19. Okay. I don't know if it's him or, or, or the uh, guy who's coming on tomorrow who's 19, but All yeah, right. someone was 19. Okay, folks, the man, what, 19, 21, young, young kid. I'm old enough to be his dad. He had the courage to come here and talk to David and I, whereas the Muslim heroes, these scholars and apologists, Shabir Ali, these cowards, we're not men enough to do it. Come on, guys. Well, let's yep. be Christ-like to this young man. Yep. I mean, Jesus said, Colossians 4, 6, it says, always make sure that your conversation is seasoned with grace. There is a time to chew someone out and put him yep. in his place if he's a blasphemer. Mm -hmm. Not a young man that you can see he's doing his best. I mean, dude, I'm reading the comments. I'm getting upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, I mean. Let me if, get something to drink. If Let you, me get something to drink. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, guys, uh, if you look at the pattern in the Bible, because we, keep in mind, Sam and I, we're, we're not the people who say, nope, we always have to be nice. We don't believe that. We don't believe that for a second. If you think Christians always have, and, and there are Christians who think that, 
Uh, being loving, the command to love, is a command to always be nice. That's absolute nonsense. Jesus wasn't always nice. Peter wasn't always nice. Paul wasn't always nice. Um, Peter and Jesus and Paul could be absolutely brutal in their rebukes of people. But if you look at the pattern, who was usually on the receiving end of the brutal smackdown? It was usually proud, arrogant people who were oppressing others and religious leaders and things like that. Those were those were the kinds of people that would receive a brutal smackdown, right? So when we, as Sam pointed out, look, I have all the respect in the, I have all the respect for this guy in the world. When I put out the word and I say, hey, if anyone wants to come on here and have a discussion, you're you're welcome to do it. So if uh, if a young man says, hey, I'm I'm I'd, I'd like to come on because I'd like to you know share my share my thoughts on why I became a Muslim and share my thoughts about Muhammad and actually have them discuss, that means. He's willing to subject his beliefs to criticism and discussion. And uh, even with people he knows have been dealing, dealing with this a long time. So you have to respect that. You have to respect that courage both to come on here and the courage to, to, to you know, be on a discussion with someone like Sam Shamoon, right? And so, guys, we have we have all, we have a lot of respect for this young man, and so we're we're not yeah. we're not we're not here to obliterate him. We're not to school him. We're not to call him. We're not here to call him names. We're here to be patient, to try and ex try and grow through as many of his points as we can. Yeah. Um, and if you look, we also I also have to say, based on what I've heard so far, we obviously disagree with a lot of what he said. But his willingness to say, okay, you know, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about that. You know, maybe maybe that that doesn't point where, I, guys, this is someone who is not stubborn and arrogant, right? This is someone who's willing to learn. So this is precisely precisely the sort of person you should want to have a discussion. There are other times when you want to debate. There are other times when you, you know, someone needs to be put in his place. This is this is not someone who needs to be put in his place or schooled or crushed. This is someone you want to have a discussion with because he's actually listening and paying attention. So those are my and thoughts. And let me confirm the, something of what, what happened to me. I was around 2021. 20, a nasty, vile Muslim apologist, <clears throat> nasty, wasn't gentle with me, humiliated me, embarrassed me, mocked me, put an anger and a hatred in my heart towards Muslim apologists. This is why I ended up becoming so harsh and cruel early on, because he treated me like garbage. Now, had that Muslim maybe treated me with respect, it would have probably been a different result. So do you think I want to antagonize this guy, this young man? And get him upset and make him hate the faith. Come on. Yep. Uh, uh, Isa, you, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's basically Sam, 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 Sam and I are responding to some guys who think uh, we're, you know, by, by letting you actually tell your story, we're supposed to be jumping on you. We're supposed to be yeah, jumping yeah, all yeah, over you on all this stuff. And we're saying, we're saying no, there, we, Sam and I believe there's a time where you put someone, you know, you have to put someone in his place. But the yeah, biblical, yeah. Uh, what I pointed out was the biblical pattern is it's usually arrogant people who are oppressing others, who are lording it over to others. Those are the people who get blasted in, in the Bible. But someone who's sitting yeah. here just having a having a, a discussion, um, no. Yeah, so we, we're po we're pointing out that no, we're gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna keep this nice friendly discussion. Yeah, no one's no one's that. trying to crush anybody here. All right. Sorry, go ahead. So go ahead. What's the next point? I forgot. We were um, so yeah, as far as as far as uh, Issa's main points, so um, if he really believes in Muhammad, and if he has a good reason to believe in Muhammad, he could take it by faith that that Muhammad is um, is related to to Ishmael, and that there's some uh, there's some connection to Abraham there. Uh, but you know, he he would have to call that a, a kind of leap of faith. So yeah. we we can actually look at some of these other reasons. And uh, Sam, what what do you think about yeah. the points about Isaiah Isaiah, 42, right? Isaiah 42? Because this is this is a this is a popular yeah. one. So there are a couple of issues here. Namely, whether whether the teachings of Muhammad and Islam are in line with the teachings and theology of the book of Isaiah. And then secondly, yeah. is Isaiah 42 about Muhammad? Is this predicting an Arab prophet? Sure. And if, if it is predicting an Arab prophet, can we say that, that this has some connection to Muhammad? Yeah. See, now, <clears throat> one thing I think you would, have, you would agree... If Isaiah is going to predict the prophet, then the prophet that's going to come cannot contradict what Isaiah believes. So I'm going to go slow with this. You even said Isaiah prophesied Jesus, which is interesting because I'm going to show you where we believe Jesus was prophesied. But before that, 
and I just want you to note these references down, unless you want to read them, in chapter 5 of the Quran, verse 18. Surat al Maida, chapter 5, verse 18. So I want to go slow so you can keep up. I don't want to go too fast. <clears throat> Thank you. Chapter 5, verse 18, it says that the Jews and the Christians said to Muhammad, we are the sons of Allah, his beloved. And the responses say, why then does he punish you for your sins? Nay, you are but mortals that he created. So the Quran says Allah is not a spiritual father to the Jews and the Christians because Christians and Jews do not believe God is a physical being who has sex with women to sire children. When, when a Christian or a Jew says, God is my father spiritually, he made me, he gives me life, he protects me and he loves me like an earthly father. But Muhammad said, no, Allah is not your father. And then in chapter 19, verses 88 to 93, chapter 19, verses 88 to 93, there it says that the highest relationship you can have, chapter 19, verses 88 to 93, Slave to master. Allah is only your, your master, your Lord, and all you are is a servant, slave. But in Isaiah 63, verse 16, and Isaiah 64, verse 8, I'll can, I can read it for you, so you know I'm not making it up. Isaiah 63, verse 16, and Isaiah 64, verse 8. I'm going to read those. This is what Isaiah said. Okay. <clears throat> for you are our father. Were Abraham not to know us? nor Israel to acknowledge us. You, Lord, are our, our, our Father, our Redeemer. You are named from of old. And then again, do not be so very angry, Lord. Do not remember our crimes forever. Now, because it's New American Bible, it's a different versification, you see? Because yeah. it's a, yeah, let me just check it out, because I, I suspect that they're probably going to go with the Jewish rendering. My, my apologies, guys, hold on. Because the New American Bible does have a different versification. So here, verse 7. Yet, Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are powder. We are all the work of your hands. So it's in verse 7 in the American Bible. But other versions are going to be verse 8. So keep that in mind. Yeah, wait. Can you repeat the verse about the, about the clay, if you don't mind? Yes. yes, right here. It's Isaiah 64, verse 7. Yet, Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are potter. We are all the work of your hands. So Isaiah is uh, saying, because God yeah. made us, yeah, and he sustains us, and he redeems us. He's our father. So why did Shit. your prophet reject that? Can I make a quick point really quick? I, I think it, it makes me smile, some, like in a good way, right? When you said that uh, we you know, we are the clay, and then God is, is, is the one who's making us. It's very interesting because the Quran it says in Surah Rahman that God created us out of clay. So again, it really it's interesting and it makes me smile to see how the Bible and the Quran. They every day I read it, it they always find a way to just fit exactly. Okay, well, Isa, you ignore yeah. what I said. Sorry, I, I yeah. let me let me and address you, your point. No, but you're saying that clay. It says that Adam was created from clay, but Genesis two says from dust. So they don't mm -hmm. agree. It's a contradiction. Yes. But let's put that aside. So you say yes. That's okay. good. But let's come back to the issue though. Okay. Isaiah said, and he's using the metaphor of a potter and clay. So God is not literally a potter. You're not yes. literally a clay. God's not going to turn you into a vase, right? <laughs> this is a metaphor. Well, metaphor meaning that God has fashioned you, and he's in control of your destiny. And mm -hmm. if you turn to him, then he will bless you and won't bring calamity. But that's not the point. I want you to focus on the point. You okay. can go to the clay analogy. It only shows that Muhammad takes parts of the truth and contradicts the rest. Since the God of Isaiah is a father to his people, the God of Isaiah is a father to his people, spiritually, not sexually. Mm -hmm. Why is it then, Muhammad says, Allah is not a father to the Muslim Ummah, and how can he then be in agreement with Isaiah when Isaiah says he is a father, Muhammad said he isn't? How can that be a prophet mentioned by Isaiah? Okay, okay, so, so, your, so your claim is how can the prophet peace be upon him? Be a prophet when he, when he goes against Isaiah. Is that, is that the, am I clear? Yes. One, okay. Other aspects too, but this right yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. As a human being who was born, I I don't know, right? It's I, I only Allah knows. But but I just have a similar point. So I have, I want to make a point. Uh, the fact that we don't know, right? So when Jesus, when the of course my you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when the Jews asked him. You know, these, these, this couple has committed adultery. What should we do according to the law of Moses? What should we do? So we, they should be stoned. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus said, let, let he who is without sin throw the first stone. So is Jesus not contradicting the Torah there? Yes. Because yeah, you confuse two issues. You've confused okay. 
abrogation with the nature of God. They're not the same. But even in John 8, no, they didn't bring two people. That was Jesus' precise point. You're referring to John 7, 53 to 8, 11. They only brought the woman. And only okay. bringing the woman, and this is where you're going to see why Jesus said what he said. He caught them in their lie. Because the law says you got to bring the man and the woman to be stoned. Instead, they brought only the woman caught in adultery, which means they let the man go. So Jesus right there was showing their hypocrisy. I You're see. not in line with the law of Moses because if you did, if you actually cared about the law of Moses, you would have brought the man that she committed adultery with. But in not bringing the man, you are in sin, in violation of the law. You hypocrites get away from I you. see. Okay. That, That's that, what Jesus is doing there. But yeah, don't that, forget, there's yeah. a difference between, I'm not trying to cut you off. I want you to understand the difference between commands and legislation for a specific period of time and the nature of god we're not talking about legislation because even as muslims will tell you abrogation only relates to commands but you can't abrogate a fact about god's nature because god's nature doesn't change whereas commands can change because of circumstances that change so since God has always been a father, he was a father in the Old Testament, he's the father of Jesus and believers in the New Testament, how then can Muhammad be a prophet like Isaiah when he says, my God is not a father, but Isaiah says, no, my God is a father. Okay. All right, let me, uh, let me think this over really quick. Okay, sure. so it's all about So, of course, I don't know the exact truth, right? But I know that God, when he reveals a verse in the Quran, or when he when He wants to send down a... a when he, let me see I want to word this. I don't want to say anything that is wrong. But everything he would do had, has, a purpose, has a purpose to it, right? Everything. So when he calls himself the father, and then we are like his his uh, figure, uh, figuratively speaking, his children, right? And then in the Quran, when he says uh, Allah is the father to no one, right? Of course, I believe uh, that that all happens. That all was revealed for a purpose, right? So we dis we disagree with each other for a reason, right? And God doesn't make mistakes. It's not like he made a mistake with the verses, right? It's like you believe that he was a father. I believe that uh, theo uh, theoret uh, figuratively speaking, then yeah, we are children, but not not literally. But when it comes to uh, that verse or that Muhammad peace be upon him not saying that we're all that we are uh, that we're not children of God, of course that does go against Isaiah, <clears throat> and of course uh, the prophets do need to go in line with each other. When I mean they go in line with each other, I mean with with like very strong like beliefs like like he is one like god is one or uh, uh a message that god uh gave an old testament prophet would it should be in line with the new testament prophet now it, i mean sorry with uh, muhammad or any other prophet that will come after them so i do know um the message that the overall message that was given to the old testament prophets are in line with with what the prophet received I do believe that, and just because uh, a few verses don't line up, all of that has to do with with what was meant to happen, right? So these verses were supposed to go against each other. Not not that we could explain them, but that so we could fathom and wonder, you know, why? You know, I don't know why those verses are different. I can't, I couldn't answer that. No, no Muslim in the world could answer that. I don't know. That's my uh, answer. Isa. I just want to ask him this, though. Could you say, like Isaiah says, or Christians say, could you say it? And I know you can't, but I just want to see if you... Could you say, oh, Allah, you are our Father. You are my Father in Heaven. Like Isaiah said, like Moses said, like Jesus said, like his followers say. So can you call God your Father like they did? And if not, why not? Because you're following a man who doesn't allow you to do it, whereas all the other prophets says you can call him that. So can you say, oh, God... Okay. Oh Allah, you are my father. I don't know the, the the Islamic ruling on it. I don't know like if if that like is considered like. Uh, no, you yourself can you say it? Can you mean, say it and mean it and know that God is your father in heaven? 
Well, that's that's a bit of a uh, that would be hard for me to say because I know if I say that you might pull a verse that would go against me. So like it's hard for me to say. No, no, it's not going against you because I'm telling you if you follow the Bible and you follow the teachings of Jesus, you could say that because I want to read some for you. Okay. In John one, John one verses twelve to thirteen, John one verses twelve to thirteen, but to those who did accept him, meaning Jesus. He gave power to become children of God to okay. those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. So Jesus says to you, if you come to me as a son of God, I will give you the power to be a child of my father. And you can call him my father, but not if you follow Muhammad. Okay. Um, so, like I said earlier, um, I know that in the Bible... Uh, some uh, some biblical figures are called the sl God's slave, right? It's God's servant. Uh, uh, I know in the New Testament, I I believe it's let me find it. In the beginning says uh, I forget his name. It says his name, the a servant of God, and I believe it's I will find it for you in just we're, a we're, second. We're, yeah. we're, we're not we're not we're not disagreeing with you that people yes, exactly. yeah, the people yeah. in the Bible are called servants. It's it's yeah. that we have we kind of have multiple relationships, right? Like you, like yeah. like like you, you could be you could be a son of your father and yet work for him. So you'd have you'd have yeah. two separate relationships with with your father. So so we we yeah we have we, okay. we're not we're not challenging you. You don't you need to you don't need to prove it to us. Okay yeah. okay so my I mean I I guess this is just one of the points where we where we disagree with, and I guess it's going to be hard to change anyone's mind. But for me, that's not like a a, a big enough like issue for me to want to question my faith i understand mm -hmm. you know when i was a christian uh yeah i believed god was my father but when i after i converted it, it the relationship shifted not that god was any less of a uh not that god wasn't any i couldn't have a relationship with him right the hadith i don't have the exact one but god says if you come to me walking i'll come to you running if you come to me one hand span i'll come to you one cubit so like the relationship between god and 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 me never changed right? i saw a strong well, relationship you, saw, I, you yeah. just said you used to call him father when you're a christian if mm -hmm. it didn't change why did it stop and before you answer that let me tell you why it is a major difference it's not minor we'll go to something else but okay. it is my major it's not minor because yes Every child is a servant to his parents because you serve them. So it, part of being a child is you're also a servant. It's not a contradiction. But all you are is a servant, no more. But a son is a servant who's more than a servant. And here's what Jesus said. So it's not minor. It's major because it shows okay. that Muhammad doesn't follow them. Because in John 8, John 8, 34 to 36, John 8, 34 to 36, this is what Jesus says. Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if a son frees you, then you will truly be free. Jesus said, no, it's major. If all you are is a slave, you have no guarantee you're going to remain in the house. But if you're a child set free by the son, then you have a permanent place in your father's house. But you just said, I used to call him father, but now as a Muslim, my relationship's the same, but you don't call him father. No, your relationship has changed. It's like saying to your dad, I used to call you dad, but now no more. I won't call you dad, but our relationship is the same. That doesn't work. Okay. Uh, and of course, we, we, we both have a different uh, difference of opinion when it comes to that. Um, all I can say, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how I want to go about in addressing these because these, this is... Uh, I mean, I, I did. I did definitely did not come prepared for this exact this exact conversation. Mm -hmm. But if I mean, if it's all right with you, I feel like we could talk about that topic okay. all all yep. day, and then we it would be else. hard. Yeah, I, and and of course, nothing. Uh, not not to like uh, bash the topic. It just I personally I feel like it can go on forever, and it would be hard to answer. Mm -hmm. But my like sort of final statement would be, uh, if this makes any sense, of course, I know it would be hard to relate to you. But in a way, I, I feel my relationship with God has got stronger ever since I am, am his slave. That's how I feel. If I'm, you know, like when I wake up for morning prayer before the sunrise, I force myself out of bed because I'm his slave. I, whatever he wants me to do, I would do. If he wants me to wake up before the sunrise and pray, 
that's what I do. If he wants me to stay up late to pray, that's what I do. If he wants me to fast all day, that's what I do. I am whatever he commands me to do. And that's what I, that's, that relationship for me has gotten me stronger with him. And of course, everybody's different. Everybody has different uh, uh, beliefs when it comes to that. But my sort of like statement with that would, would be, my ending statement would be that for uh, that yeah. topic. Let me, uh, let, let me, uh, let me mention, uh, let me mention two things here and then we can, uh, and then, yeah, we'll, then we'll, they'll, we'll move on on, on this issue. But uh, in, in in Isa's defense, he 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 basically pointed out, yeah, there is some issue there with uh, you know with God being our heavenly Father in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, but not in Islam. Uh, but he pointed out it's kind of not it's it's not enough a big enough issue to sort of bother him about Islam. And and I would go back to what I said earlier that. If you have good enough reasons to believe something, then when something else comes along and 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 casts doubt on it, then you know if you're if you're if you're considering the evidence in a scales, well, yeah, I see that as a problem. I see that problem over there, but I have this better evidence over here. And so again, you could take these leaps of faith on various issues as long as you have good reasons um, to to back up what you believe. But I also want to point out, uh, Isa, that that this is this is actually. We believe this is actually a huge issue that that God, because it's it's connected to all kinds of other things. The the status of God as our heavenly Father versus our pure slavery in Islam mm-hmm. is connected to all kinds of other things. For so, for instance, it's con- if you think about it, um, a parent who has a child, the parent just automatically loves his or her child, right? It's just, mm-hmm. that's that's the way it is. I love my son or my daughter. It doesn't matter if he does something wrong. I still love my son or, or, or my daughter. It's not that, you know, my son was just born and I'll wait 15 or 20 years to see if he turns out good. And if he turns out good, then I'll love him because he's earned yeah. my love. Whereas with a slave, if you were to buy a slave, you don't, you don't, you don't love that slave. You don't love that slave. That slave, you could grow to love that slave, right? You could say, man, this is the best slave ever. I really, I really love my slave. But there you would be earning it. And so the reason I'm pointing this out is if you look at the Bible and the Quran, and this isn't simply a matter of calling God our, you know, our, our father. It's in the Bible, we love God because God first loved us. So God starts this off. It's not us earning God's love. It's we, we our, our righteousness is as filthy rags before God. We're not good enough. He loves us because he's our, our heavenly father. In Islam, notice what you have in the Quran. You have to obey God first and then he will love you, right? You obey, mm-hmm. God tells you what to do. And then you have to go out and obey him. And if you obey him enough, then he might love you. And so you have to show yourself. In, in other words, he doesn't love you automatically. You have to go mm-hmm. out and show that you're like yeah. the, a really, really good slave, and then he'll love you. So and the, the point is, this isn't simply a matter of thinking of God as a father or thinking of God as a master. This is connected to all kinds of things. It's connected to ethics and so on, because if if I view other human beings as people who are sons and daughters of God, whether they recognize it or not, then that's different than I would view them as if I if I view them all as rebellious slaves who God despises and, and has no love for. And so it's kind of connected to all kinds of things. Anyway, the point of all of that was just this yeah. is actually a really big issue. And mm-hmm. so all of these things are connected. And so if God in the Old Testament is the heavenly father, and this is connected to God's view of human beings and human beings view of God and human beings, uh, our view of each other, and we find it in the same in the New Testament. And then Muhammad comes along and he says, no, you, you don't you don't have that kind of relationship. The only kind of relationship you can have is a slave to master relationship. And therefore, you better be really good slaves. Well, there might be people who who think, you know, oh, I'm going to work really hard and I'm going to be a great slave, and that could be a great that could be a great motivator to get people to do what you want. Uh, only point is, um, I don't think this is a this is a, mi- a minor issue. Now, with, with 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 all of that said, Sam, so yes. you, you pointed out sort of one difference between yeah, the theology of Islam and the theology of uh, of Isaiah. Did did you want to yeah. go through more? Or, yeah, I want to. I just want to, and I I just want to read it before I tell him where it is. I want to read something, and I want you to tell me. Isa, tell me who this is talking about. I'm just going to read it for you, and I'll tell you where it's at after I'm done, all right? Okay. 
Okay, let me just read it for you. It's 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 a, not too long. It's about twelve verses, but I want to okay. read and hear carefully. And then when I tell you who it is, please tell me who you think it is. Right? Okay. <clears throat> who who would have who would believe what we have heard? <clears throat> and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from parched land. He had no majesty <clears throat> to draw us to him, no beauty to attract us. He was spurned and avoided by men, a man of suffering, knowing pain, like one from whom you turn your face away, spurned, and we did not esteem him. Yet it was our pain that he bore, our sufferings he endured. We thought of him as stricken, struck down by God, that's what we thought, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our sins. He was pierced for our sins, <clears throat> crushed for our iniquity. <clears throat> He bore the punishment that makes us whole. By his wounds, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, all following our own way. And the Lord laid on him the guilt of us all. All our sins were placed on him. Though harshly treated, he submitted and did not open his mouth. Like a lamb led to slaughter or a sheep silent before shearers, he did not open his mouth. Seized and condemned, he was taken away. Who would have thought any more of his destiny? He was cut off from the land of the living, <clears throat> struck for the sins of his people. Let me repeat that again. He was struck for the sins of his people. He was given a grave among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. But it was the Lord's will to crush him with pain by making his soul <clears throat> a guilt offering, an offering for guilt. He shall see. This one shall see offspring, and his days will be lengthened, and the Lord's will will be accomplished through him. <clears throat> because of his anguish, <clears throat> he shall see the light. Because of his knowledge, his knowledge, he will be content. My servant, the just one, will make many righteous, will justify many, make them righteous. Why? Because he bore their sin. Their iniquity he bore. He, he took it upon himself. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the many, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death, was included among sinners, and he bore the sins of many, and he interceded for sinners. Who is this about? Based off my um, many years at Catholic school, uh, I, would, I would have to say, let me, before I answer, because I know that you're going to, once I say the answer, you're going to provide more verses and more verses and we're only no, going to go down in a hole. No, 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 no. Just who is this? The interpretation, would, I would say Jesus. But yeah. if you let me, if I could finish really quick. Huh? Uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, this is predicting uh, his death, right? And, yes. and, and it's predicting uh, mainly what, what Christians believe today. Um, and this has to coincide with, with what I say earlier, uh, the verses in the Quran that go against the Bible. Because we do know that the Bible says Jesus didn't die, but the verse you just said read. Yeah. He said, said that's that not he the Quran did. now. I know you're bringing up. No, no, no. Put the Quran okay. aside for now. Okay. You okay. just admit that this is a prophecy, and this is the same Isaiah you quoted. Isa, you quoted Isaiah. Mm -hmm. You just admit to everyone reading it, I would say this is Jesus. So over 700 years before Jesus is born, we have a prophecy that you yourself know it's about Jesus, which agrees with the New Testament. And you just said to everyone, the Quran contradicts it. Okay, so yeah. Isaiah agrees with the New Testament over against Muhammad. You just gave proof Muhammad cannot be a true prophet. Isaiah stands against him and stands with us, the New Testament and Christians. So why do you still believe in Muhammad? I, yeah, I'll tell you right now. Um, and this this is what I was bringing up earlier. The, the, the verses in the Quran that go against the Bible. Jesus didn't die in the Quran. But in the Bible, he did, and my my position still stands. I trust my prophet, and that's that's what I, I trust my prophet. That's really what it comes down to. I trust in the message he got, and in the message he got, it was made to appear to them like they were crucified. So of course, the gospel accounts are going to say that he died because God made it appear to Even them. Even to Isaiah, seven hundred years before, so God made God's it plan to is Isaiah. But you, well, hold on, so listen to the reasoning. You're mm -hmm. not listening because right? you're talking about Gospels. Isaiah comes before, 700 years before Jesus. So according mm -hmm. to you, Allah even made it appear to Isaiah that Jesus would be killed for the sins of his people. 
even though it wasn't Jesus, it was someone else that was made to look like Jesus. So you're saying Allah even deceived Isaiah before it happened? Okay. I don't, I, mean, I don't know how to explain it. It's sort of just one of those beliefs that I have, that Muslims have, that it's, but it's hard to explain. So, like, nothing happens without God's permission. And, and when God says, this, I did this, we, we take that. So when he says that it was made to appear to them like he died, I, for me, my belief, I trust in what God revealed to the prophet, and I believe that, look, your religion exists today. It's Christianity, right? It was meant to happen. It was supposed to happen. It's Qadr. It's, it was supposed to happen. It's divine destiny that that was supposed to happen. Your religion exists today. Christianity, the, your beliefs that Jesus died on the cross for our sins was supposed to happen. Allah doesn't make mistakes. Our belief came that it was made for them to believe that. So our belief is that you believe that, but our belief is that it didn't happen. That's what Allah made them think. And of course, Allah did it. It's not like he made a mistake. Christianity is not a mistake. It was supposed to happen. It's the qadr of Allah. It was supposed to happen. And that's what I, that's, that's the answer okay. I give you. So well, Lisa, let me just reason this. Sorry, Dave, just one point. So, but it's not just the Christians. Isaiah prophesied 700 years before Jesus. So you're basically saying Allah even convinced Isaiah Christianity is true for believing <clears throat> that Jesus would come and die for our sins so that Allah made Isaiah a Christian before Christ and not a Muslim. The same Isaiah that you said announced Muhammad. Why is Allah doing this confusing Isaiah and Christians to believe something that really didn't happen? And to cling to something that's false, I'm still confused. But Dave, you right. want to say something? Go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry, go on. Yeah, I just, I just wanted, um, I just wanted to point out that I, I, I think <clears throat> that Isa is sort of giving an interpretation, uh, drawing yes. his theology on an interpretation of Surah five, verse forty-eight of the Quran. Um, that, and let me go ahead and read this, this uh, last part of Surah five, verse forty-eight of the Quran. Um, to each among you we have prescribed a law and a clear way. If Allah willed, he would have made you one nation, but mm -hmm. that he may test you in what he has given you. So strive as in a race in good deeds. So I, I think the interpretation here is that God has given different revelations and he has a reason. He has a reason yeah. for it. We may not be aware of the reason for what God has done, <laughs> But um, it seems Isa believes that it's okay for God to reveal one thing at one time and then to, to go against that at another time because God has reason for that kind of thing. And I have to say, I can't say that's, that's out of line with the Quran. When the Quran, you know, when, if, if, the, if the standard Muslim interpretation is correct, that Allah makes people think that Jesus died on the cross when they mm -hmm. actually didn't. Or when Allah makes Muhammad's... Um, makes Muhammad's followers believe that there's only a small army approaching in order to get them to go out and do what he wants. And so it just seems that God can do this kind of thing in order to achieve his desired ends. And so we're obviously mm. going to disagree with that, but I, I think uh -huh. that's, that's how it's tying together. One thing yeah. about that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, so I just want to say in 548, yeah. if you read it, it's not talking about events including uh, prophets and what they're going to experience it's talking about legislation laws. oh i know i was just like, say, i was just saying that's why yeah, i called that's why i called clarify. that's why i called it an yeah, interpretation that's, yeah that's what i'm saying but if we're going to let the quran speak like i'm sure isa wants me to do yeah, that's the not quran. the verse that i was talking about it it was and it, uh surah nahl uh, verse nine uh and and had he willed he would have guided you uh he could have guided you all Right, meaning he could, he would have made you all one religion. Right? He could have guided you all, but he didn't. He made us different religions, and there's even a verse in the Quran where he made us different nations and different tribes, so that we can get to know each other. That's what the Quran says. You so know, I, Isa, yeah, go ahead, finish your point, because I wanted you to go to four one fifty seven, because your interpretation four one fifty seven is not mm -hmm. the obvious one. But finish your point, because I want to go to one four one fifty seven. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, we, no, we can go to 4.157. Okay. Yeah, you, you've taken the typical interpretation that others have taught you, uh, that it says it's no so one taught me. Them. Okay. okay, so can you show me? Well, here, let's let's see if they didn't teach you. Okay. When it said, so it so appeared unto them that Jesus was killed, what happened then? 
you're saying wait can you clarify the question which what do you mean you exactly? referred to 4 157 that it was yes. made to appear unto them that jesus was killed but you said okay. he didn't die what happened to him then if he didn't die how would how did it appear unto them well we have the gospel accounts don't don't we we no, have the gospel say he was killed and buried you said yeah, the that's, that's what allah made them see that's what okay, happened so to what them. The, so they saw a man die was that jesus uh no, I do not believe it was Jesus. I don't. Okay, so can't, Allah made someone look like him. There, I don't want to answer for something I don't know, right? You okay, know, because right. right, I don't want to be wrong, right? So, okay. so I don't want to speak for like Muslims when when I could be very much wrong. That's fine. Yeah, that's but, fine. Good. Yeah. but let me quickly pull up the verse. I yeah, four one fifty seven, chapter four, verse one fifty seven, because that's yeah. not what the text is saying. If you let the Quran speak, if you let the Quran speak. Mm -hmm. And I want to try to walk you through it. It's not because I want to teach you Islam, but I've, yeah. I've dealt with this so much that I know what it means and doesn't mean if I let the So, so like at the end when it says, and وَمَا قَتَلُهُ yakina, if, 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 if anything's for sure, they killed him not. Yakina, yeah, they? For, for a who's surety. They? Who's they? I mean, I would, I mean, I would have to say the people who, who the Romans, I would have to no, say, the web, whoever killed him. No, because, in, see, uh, Isa, you can't just read the Quran the way you want. There's okay. a context. Yes, The of context course. begins not at the end of the verse. It starts even before that where it says, And they said in boast, mm -hmm. who's they? We killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the apostle of Allah. That's the I'll, Romans? Uh-uh, uh, I would say, uh, out of mockery, they would say, we killed the Messiah. Yeah, but, but you didn't answer they who? Don't, the Jews, but they don't believe okay. he was the Messiah. That's okay. sort of a mocking. Isa, you're going they into, would, Isa, they would make fun of him. Isa, you're anticipating an objection I didn't bring up, so I know okay. it's, it's a... I didn't say, that's not my argument, so follow with me because you're already getting excited about how to answer this, and I'm trying okay. to help you. Yep. So you just said it's the Jews, right? Mm hmm Okay, now go to chapter 8, verse 17, because the way you interpreted that statement, you just created a contradiction, the Quran, because I want you to go to chapter 8, verse 17. Chapter 8, verse 17. All right. Uh, hold up. All right, I'm there. Read what it says slowly for us, slowly. 17, hold on here. Oh, I lost my self on the page. Okay, here we go. It was not you who killed them, but God. And when you, O prophet, throw sand at them, it was not your throw that defeated them, but God's. Do so it was God's to do the believers a favor. God is all-seeing and all-knowing. Okay. Now the first part says you did not kill them. <clears throat> Who is he talking to? I don't know the I don't know the context okay. of that verse. Well, it obviously he's referring to the prophet there, but if you want context, the commentators yeah. will tell you this is the battle of Badr. Okay. Okay, but did, did you read the first part? This was God's doing. Is that was that what it was? No, the I, first I, part. I, you I closed you the did book. not. No, open it up because I need you to read. Okay. Don't close it too fast. All right. I want you to read. Okay. All right, Chapter I'm there. Chapter seventeen. Okay. It says you did not kill them, right? Mm -hmm. Are but you reading? Okay, but you're, since you're trying to learn the Arabic, can you read the Arabic for me there? You have it with yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to take me a, just a tad that's longer okay. to find it. Do you know that's the, the okay. name of the surah in, yeah, in Arabic? Yeah, Surah Anfal. Um, Anfal. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah Anfal. Yeah, yeah. That, Anfal. Just give me a second. Sure. Find that's it. Fine. That's Anfal. Okay. Take your time. Do you know the number by any chance as well? 17, I have 17, but I don't okay, know. Yeah, I found it. Maybe 16. It may be 16 because the different versification. But go ahead, read it slowly. Yeah, I found I found the uh, the chapter. Let me find the verse really quick. It's 17. Yes. Uh, 17. Hold up. Okay, I'm there. Okay, what does it? it say? Slowly. So they can hear. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Falam tak. Tuluhum walakin Allah qatalnahum wa ma ramayta iz rahmayta walakin Allah rama waliyub liyal mu'minina minhu balan Hasana. I think In, you need to go to 16 because I'm looking at it and I don't think that's uh, the first. Yeah. Because like I said, there may be a different. Yeah. Okay, it, that was. It may be. What was that? That, Read? that was, that was uh, okay. 17 right there. Okay, 17, yeah, because in the Arabic sometimes the versification is different. But in 17, it should set up uh, Falam, mm -hmm. uh, Taqtuluhum, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. That's what I read. So, okay, then you read it. All right. It says, you did not slay them, right? You did not slay them. You did not slay them. It's plural. So it's, uh, it's dak, a plural. Dak, dak, dak dak yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, you did not. Now, go back to 4157 with me. Sorry, because I want you to see something here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why do you go there? Kataluhu. That's the word you're going to... So basically, it's similar in language. One is singular, the other is plural. They did not kill him. Mm -hmm. You did not kill them, right? Mm -hmm. okay, but in chapter 8, verse 17, this is what I want you to get. All chapter right. 8, verse 17, about the Muslims at Badr that killed the pagans when there was about a thousand, according to the tradition, mm -hmm. 313 Muslims, right? Yep. Now, the Quran says they didn't kill anybody. Is that true? They didn't kill anybody? So you're saying the Quran saying that, that they didn't kill anybody at, ba at the Battle of Badr. That's Is that what it's saying? saying. I mean, that's the well, verse. It says, you did not kill them. Well, it, it said God did, right? Okay, that's, so did God come said. down and take a sword and kill them? So how did God do it? Through, through the people that fought. But it said they didn't kill them. So I'm trying to read the Quran the way you just did. They didn't kill okay. them. So they had nothing to do with it. So who killed them? If we're taking it to mean that way, then then of course we can take it back to the other verse and use it against it. But that's no, not what I was trying to say. But you're getting the point. Just yeah, I am getting the what you're saying. Says, just because the Quran says mm -hmm. they didn't do something, it doesn't mean they didn't actually do that very thing. It means they okay. would not be able to do that thing if it wasn't the Qadr of Allah. Okay. You understand the difference now? Because mm -hmm. yeah. the Muslims did kill the pagans, but the point is... You wouldn't have killed them if it wasn't the Qadr of Allah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, now, chapter 4, verse 157, you need to prove to me that it's actually saying they didn't actually kill Jesus. Okay. But okay. instead of it saying, you didn't kill him for the reason you thought, but that's how it appeared to you. Because okay. they're boasting we killed him. Why are they saying we killed him? What were they trying to prove? When, when they say in boast, it's out of mockery. They're like, no, we no, we're not done about Messiah. Forget, you keep going to the wrong emphasis. Okay, Why sorry. are they boasting that they killed Jesus? What are they trying to prove? Because, because, uh, well, first of all, I, I just have a question. My, of course, my Arabic isn't the greatest. Does it say in boast? Is that, is that the Arabic or is that just sort of well, like the... I'm not, even if it's not there, I don't even care about that term. What well, I'm saying is, why are they saying we killed him? Forget the word boast. Because why? they believe they killed him. Why? What, what are they trying to prove to Muhammad? Sam, Sam, to Sam is asking, what? Why would that be important to Jesus' well, Jewish it's, enemies of his time? It's a, it's a verse. It's saying that they say we killed him. It's why? not saying. No, no, what no. Are they so, no, to prove no to Sam, Sam, Sam is, Sam is asking, why, why would, they, why would they boast about this? Why would they say, hey, we killed this guy? Well, boast. I, you said boast wasn't in the. Forget the, the word Arabic. boast. Yeah, okay, forget the word boast. Yeah, why would, why okay. would they? Yeah. Why would? In other words. Lots of people have been killed down through history. Why would a group? Mm -hmm. Why would a group be coming forward saying, "Ha, we killed that guy. We killed okay. that guy." I'll try my best. Of course, yeah. I, I don't I don't know uh, everything. Of course, but I'll try my best. So, I, I my understanding, my belief would be that they're saying that because God is 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 starting the verse, and he needs to start the verse with some sort of context. So he's starting off by saying. This verse is about, and they say we killed the Messiah. Yeah, but you're, you said you're, you're still not following argument. Why even mention it all? Don't even mention that. Mention so something why, else. So why yeah, would the verse be revealed? Why would the verse yeah. be revealed? Is that what you're asking? Because, yeah, why are they quoting what the Jews said? Because if you read the verses before that, they even mock his mother. They insult his mother. So what is the Quran trying to say to the Jews who are saying this thing about his mother, Jesus' mother, and saying we killed him? The Quran is trying to refute them, right? So you're asking me why was a verse of the Quran revealed? I, I just I just don't understand. No, Sam, what, Sam, Sam, okay, Sam, just yeah, go ahead and tell him. Just okay. go ahead and tell yeah, him, yeah. and then and then he yeah. and then he can he can uh, he can agree or disagree. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me simplify it because it's taking too long. There's okay. obviously if you read, if you don't laugh and just read 153 to 157. Okay. The context is the Jews are insulting Jesus and insulting his mother in order to show that Jesus is a fake. He's not the real Messiah. Because if he's the real Messiah, we wouldn't be able to kill him because you can't kill the Messiah. Because this is a context in which Muhammad is trying to convince the Jews, believe him as a prophet, and they're making fun of him. Follow you? You're saying Jesus is the Messiah and his mother was a virgin? We know his mother wasn't a virgin because in the Talmud it says she had illicit relations with a Roman soldier, Pandera. That's what's their accusation. So okay. we know he's a fake, and here's proof he's a fake. We killed him. How could we kill him? So in other words... They're trying to show your prophet that Jesus is not the Messiah, 
because we killed him. You can't kill him if he's the Messiah. So now the Quran is responding to them. It's saying, okay. they, when it says, <clears throat> we boast, don't forget the word boast. I don't want to get hung up on boast. For they're saying, we killed, we slew the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of Allah. They neither killed him nor crucified him, but it so appeared unto them. See, that's the key. Okay. They neither killed nor crucified him, but it appeared unto them. It's not even talking about Christians. Don't bring the Christians in or the the Romans. It doesn't even address Christians. It's saying, you Jews, okay. that's how it appeared to you. It appeared to you that you killed him, when in reality, that's how it appeared to you. But does it mean you didn't kill him all, at all, or you didn't kill him for the reason you thought you did? Just to make it clear so you don't lose the point. It's mm -hmm. like in 817 when Allah says to the Muslims, because you believe Allah is talking to them, you didn't kill them. Yeah, they actually did kill them. They actually killed the pagans. But what's the point? You could not kill them if it wasn't the Qadr of Allah. So what the verse is saying to the Jews, it's not saying Jesus wasn't killed by crucifixion. It's saying he wasn't killed by crucifixion for the reason you thought. Okay. Because you thought by killing him, you are proving he's a fake. No, that's not why you killed him. Allah allowed him to die, and then Allah raised him to vindicate him. That's 4158. I see. I see. Now, I, guys, now uh, I see what you're saying. Hey, guys, let me just, because uh, there, there are a couple people who, who haven't uh, haven't followed this whole discussion, so let me, try, let me try and simplify it, everyone. So, guys, I think uh, going back and connecting this to um, what was said earlier, basically, if you go to the New Testament Gospels, Jesus is crucified and he dies. Uh, Sam went through a passage because Isa said uh, that Muhammad is confirmed by Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, and he agreed that the Old Testament prophets should line up with what Muhammad taught if Muhammad is a true prophet. And Sam went to the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, to show that the book of Isaiah prophesies someone who's going to die for our sins and be pierced for our transgressions, right? So the question then arose, well, why does Muhammad, why does Muhammad disagree with the Old Testament and the New Testament? And uh, Isa's interpretation was something along the lines of, I don't understand why God can reveal, you know, why God reveals different things to different people, but, you know, God, God has his reasons. And what Sam is drawing attention to is the Quran doesn't actually deny that, that Jesus died. The verse that Muslims go to, the verse that Muslims go to, Surah 4, verse 157, which says that, that the Jews boasted that they killed him, and Allah responds, they didn't kill him, nor did they crucify him. Muslims interpret this to mean that Jesus didn't die. But Sam pointed out that even according to the Quran, Surah 8, verse 17, referring to the Battle of Badr and the people who are killed by Muslims, Allah says, you didn't kill them, Allah killed them. In other words, Muslims obviously went out and killed people, but Allah is saying it's not really you who did it. It's not you're not the ones who really did it. Ultimately, this was Allah doing something through you. So Sam's point is following that same reasoning that the Quran uses this way of describing things. You're saying that you did it. It's not you. It's actually Allah who's doing it through you. You could apply the exact same reasoning to Surah 4, verse 157, and say Allah is not saying that Jesus wasn't crucified. He's saying that th that God did it through other people. And so it's not denying it, and you don't have anywhere else to go to in the Quran to say that Jesus uh, didn't die by crucifixion. That's it. And so basically Sam is pointing out that understanding how the Quran uses this language, you have no good reason to think that Jesus wasn't crucified according to the Quran. So wait a minute. You don't have to view this as God revealed one thing to one group and one thing to another. If Jesus was crucified, and we know that through a prophecy in the Old Testament, and Jesus was crucified according to the New Testament, and the Quran just is kind of doesn't tell you one way or another, it can be interpreted one way or another, you don't need to interpret this as the Quran as as God revealing something that contradicts other things and maybe God has a reason for contradiction here. You could view it as, well, no, I don't need I don't need to believe there's any contradiction at all. I could just go with the Old Testament and the New Testament since the Quran doesn't have any sort of firm, clear position on that. So for anyone who came in in the middle of that discussion or who didn't follow it, that's exactly. the that's the general gist there. And to confirm it, Isa, the Quran does say Jesus died. I'll give you the verses if you're ready for it. Yeah. Okay. And then let me know when you want to wrap up because Wait, we don't want to. Can I? Yeah. yeah I just want to say something really quick. Yes. Go ahead. Um. So first off, I. 
we all I should be wrapping this up really okay. soon. If, if I mean I I'd love to come back on here and, sure. and talk again, but uh, just just to save time, can you yes. uh uh why don't you explain uh. The verse you were talking about. I yes. believe you're going to talk about the one in Surah Maryam when God says... No, uh, okay. that's not the one. I'm okay. going to show you that if the Quran is consistent, it doesn't contradict. Jesus had to die before he was raised. But real quickly, as you got what I was saying about 4, 157, 158, mm -hmm. that's why in 4, 158, then it says, Nay, Allah raised him to himself. That's exactly what the Gospels teach. Mm -hmm. The Jews thought that by having Jesus killed by the Romans... He was being condemned as a false messiah, a fake prophet, and they got rid of him. But then when God raised him to life and took him to heaven, that was proof the Jews were wrong in thinking that's why Jesus got killed. So that wasn't the reason. Isaiah gave us the reason. But So, so far, my explanation of those verses, consistent with the Quran, and I'm actually making it easier for you. I'm showing the Quran is actually in agreement with the Bible. But let me now. Uh, uh, Sam, you, Sam, Sam, just let me inter just let me interject on on that on that on that particular yes, yes. point. So oh. because uh, we want to make sure there are some people here who don't know much about Islam, and so they're hearing this for the first time. So the idea here, ladies and gentlemen, is the standard Muslim way of reading Surah four, verse one fifty seven to one fifty eight, is that uh, when the Quran says that the Jews are boasting that they killed him, and the Quran says, but they killed him not, nor did they crucify him. The standard interpretation is that the 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 Quran is saying that Jesus wasn't killed, wasn't crucified, and then Muslims have all these explanations on how it was some sort of illusion and God tricked people into believing that and so on. Sam's pointing out that if you understand the actual meaning of the passage, Jews use this to say, you see, he's a fake messiah, he's a fake, you can't trust him. And then so the response is, you didn't kill him, God raised him to himself, Thus vindicated, so that this was all part of Jesus' vindication, that this proves that he is he is who he was, who he claimed to be, right? So this what you guys take, what you guys take as definitive proof that he's a false messiah, you killed him, is actually wrong because you don't you're you're not paying attention to the fact that one, God can do three things through you. God can have a reason for doing things through you, and God proves that he was doing something by raising Jesus from the dead. And so there's actually a huge issue on the interpretation. Again, there's nowhere else in the Quran you can go to to argue that Jesus survived cruci that Jesus somehow survived crucifixion and didn't die. So this is it, and this is Muslims got some problems here. Could I could I say something really quick? Um, oh, yes. Yeah. So, and, then, and then Sam so, was making a point. So yeah, go ahead and then Sam. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you were saying how uh, you're saying how that verse actually affirms what the Gospels are saying. Is that correct? Yeah, so you're saying. saying you're really, yeah. So you're saying even more the Quran agrees with the Bible. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Even more? Yeah, and but what is that? No one said that the Quran doesn't completely agree with the Bible. So it, that's not a good argument to show Muhammad. No, because I, even uh, Joseph I wasn't. Smith, well, let me just say this. Even okay. Joseph Smith believed Jesus was killed on the cross and was raised. Mm -hmm. So that means I'm going to have to follow Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon. So uh, what I'm trying to show you is if you're going to let the Quran speak, this later interpretation that came from scholars that say it was so, it was made to appear unto them, meaning that Allah made someone look like Jesus. That's not from the Quran. And ask your Muslim scholars, don't take my word for it, say, is there a single narration, a hadith from Muhammad where Muhammad explained this verse? There is none. He never explained this verse. It was others who are said to have explained it that were supposedly his companions, but that's based on tradition that comes hundreds of years later. So if I just interpret the verses in the context of the Quran, you can't say Jesus wasn't killed. You can say that the Jews didn't kill Jesus for the reason they thought, because Jesus was killed and God raised him to vindicate him. That's all you can say from those two verses. No more, no less. Okay. Right. Uh, again, I, I wasn't making a, I wasn't making any claim. I was sure, I was just okay. I was just clarifying what you guys yeah. were saying. Yeah. Um. I now I know we should really be be wrapping. Well, let me give you the final one on the death. Okay. That's the final one. It's not going to take long, okay. but I need you to go to chapter nineteen of the Quran, verse fifteen. This will be the final one. All right. Okay. I mean, after I do this, could we sort of have like a, a, like each of us can go over like their like conclusion, if that makes sense. You can. Yeah. You can. Give, okay. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll be done after this. You uh, what's the verse again? I I, I forgot it. <laughs> Nine, chapter nineteen, verse fifteen of the Quran. I want you to see what the Quran says. All right. Nineteen, fifteen. Hold yes. Up. <clears throat> I'm 
right. Uh, all right, I have it. The talking about John the Baptist. What does it say mm -hmm. about him? Yeah. What does it say? Can you read it in English? Just yep. Here. Peace be upon him the day he was born, the day he will die, and the day he will be raised to life again. Yeah, if we have a future session, I'll unpack how John is a picture of Jesus. But I want you to see the order. John mm -hmm. was born, he would die, and then he'd be raised. John yeah. was born, he died, and then he'll be raised, right? That's the mm -hmm. order, right? Mm -hmm. Now go to chapter 19 of the Quran, read verses 31 to 33, slowly. Yeah, it's the same, thing with, yeah, it's the same okay. thing with Jesus. Peace be upon me. Peace be upon me the day I was okay. So then why are you changing the order? You're having Jesus born, taken up, and then okay. come back to die and raised again, which destroys the parallel with John the Baptist. I you see. can't have your cake and eat it too, right? If John was born, died, and will be raised, the same order with Jesus. Born, died, and yet God made an exception with him, raised him and ahead of the resurrection, but it's the same order. And the final point is 31. What mm -hmm. did Jesus say? What did he do as long as he's alive? Gen verse 31. Yeah. Let me pull that up. My memory isn't great. I know it's peacefully upon me the day was born. Uh, here, you want 31, right? Yeah, or? we read 33 already. Yeah. But Made me blessed wherever I am, wherever I may be. He commanded me to pray and give alms as long as I live, to cherish my mother. He did not make me domineer, domineering or Domine graceless. Yeah, domineering, yeah, like... Uh, yeah, domineering or graceless. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now here's the one I want you to look at, 31. It says, he's enjoined on me. Alms, zakat, and prayer as long as I live. So mm -hmm. now if I go with the Muslim interpretation, Esau, Jesus didn't die, and he continues to live, and only will come back to die. This verse says he's got to be paying alms as long as he lives. So who is he paying zakat to in heaven if he didn't die? Well, I, of course I can't answer that, right? I mean, you, I know you asked me that expecting an answer, but I, I, I No, can't. I actually, let me tell you, I didn't ask you to. I asked you to think about it. Okay, I'm, I'm th yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. But can I, I can I, I just want to comment uh, for a second here. Um, of course, when we look at like the words that God reveals, of course we should look at it and be skeptical, which is exactly what we're all doing, and it's a good, it's good to do that. But in terms of, uh, in terms of of that specific example you gave. Uh, number one, no, nobody on the entire earth can answer it, and 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 of course we can think about it, but I think th that God is is referring to when He was on Earth. I mean, you can't give zakat in heaven, and even if you can, I mean, I don't think that's a good enough reason to doubt the verse. I mean, I don't know, not paying zakat in heaven. I don't think that's. Does a He good pray in heaven? I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know. I don't know. Heaven. Yeah, angels I mean, are praying in heaven, so that means he's still praying in heaven. So then, why okay. is he up? Because it says he'll only stop when he dies. So, uh, that's that's my point. If you accept that he died and it was raised, then you have no problem with that verse. So I'm, I'm trying to actually help you with that verse. Okay. But if you insist that he didn't die, then you got a problem. But if you say no, he did die and was raised. Now he's he is free from zakat. That's the point. Okay. okay. And and uh, uh, Isa, there, there's a re there's a reason to to bring all of this up. With you, yeah. as, as I said earlier, we believe that you actually have a more consistent position in terms of your, your view of earlier yeah. scriptures. That in, in the Quran, Allah does nothing but affirm the inspiration, preservation, and authority of these yes. earlier scriptures. And so when we hear Muslims saying, nope, the Quran says the Bible's been corrupted, we're like, what, what are you talking about? We, go, we look at the verses they go to, and they completely yeah. distort the meaning of these verses in order to make it, make it sound like it's talking about the corruption of the scripture. So you're yeah. already, you're already on, uh, you're already in more in line with at least that teaching of the Quran yeah. than, than lots of other, than lots of other people. But the point is, since you believe that the Quran is supposed to be in line with the earlier revelations, Sam is pointing out that the main verse that Muslims go to when they talk, when they say that Jesus wasn't crucified and wasn't killed, the verse actually doesn't say that. If you look at how the Quran uses this language yeah. and what he's, what he's doing by going to a verse, um, which given the standard Muslim interpretation would mean that Jesus is now paying zakat in heaven. Uh, does and and the standard Muslim interpretation would destroy the order that's given that he's going to he's going to be born he's going to die and he's going to be raised whereas the standard Muslim interpretation is he was born then he was raised and later he's going to come back and then he's going to die and until then he's paying zakat Sam's pointing yeah. out that 
if we go with the standard Muslim interpretation, which again, which goes against both the Old Testament and the New Testament, then we end up with a bunch of additional confusion. So he's pointing out this is this, yeah. these are yet further reasons to reject the standard Muslim interpretation of Surah 4, verse 157. And if you take the Old Testament and New Testament more seriously than most Muslims do, which which you do, then it's almost like it, you should say, okay, it looks like if I if I'm if I'm taking this seriously as these are all revelations from God and I've got two revelations which are very clear that Jesus died on the cross for sins and I've got the standard Islamic interpretation which is based on a on an interpretation of a verse and that interpretation no yeah. way in no way flows out of that verse by itself and then you look and you see all the problems of interpretation that this creates elsewhere in the Quran then you're basically the sort of person who should be rethinking this um, yeah yeah. So um, I guess I guess I should really just give my conclusion. Yeah, you know, go ahead. Because I do, um, I, and obviously I, I I don't expect like a reply. This is just sort of my like this is all like rhetorical, right? I mean, you gave me thoughts. I'll say with this is sort of my thoughts for you guys. And mm -hmm. I, of course, I'm not here to convert anybody. Of course, you know, not, nothing like that. Uh, my question is, you know, you uh, first I'll have my question, then I'll say my conclusion. So I mean, you're saying all. All these that you're you're only you're proving the point that the Quran corresponds with 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 the Old Test with the Old Testament and the New Testament, isn't that all the more proof of the Quran? Then I mean I mean I could be I mean I mean I know you I see you disagreeing but I mean you're saying that the Quran says Jesus died and came back the Quran says uh, all this confirming the scripture isn't that all the more reason to believe in it? I mean, of course I, I don't want like an answer I know I I'm sure no, I no no we'll, we'll 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 go ahead and give you one and then you can and then you yeah. can give any yeah. final final thoughts. Uh, our, our, look yeah. the Quran comes after the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Muhammad inter Muhammad interacted with Jews and Christians. Muhammad had a, a a slave girl, a slave girl who was a Coptic Christian. So Muhammad certainly heard lots and lots and lots of stories from the Jews and a lot of stories from the Christians. And Muhammad clearly had respect for them. He referred to them as the people of the book. And he, he, he said that we're responsible for obeying our books, for judging by our books, and so on. So Muhammad clearly believed that these stories that he's, he's hearing from Jews and Christians are actually authoritative revelation. Yeah. And so it's not when we see Muhammad agreeing with something, it's not, oh, my goodness, he, he must be he must be a prophet who's who's, yeah. who's speaking the truth from God. It's well, obviously, if he takes the Jews and Christians as, as authorities in religion, we are, we're going to expect him. And if he believes he's in the same line with their prophets, obviously, it's not going to be surprising that he's saying a lot of things uh, in common. But we would say yeah. this, if Muhammad is saying a lot of things in common and yet we find some very, very important differences. Like according according to the New Testament, Jesus is the divine son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead. And in the, in the Quran, the passages that Muslims believe that the Quran denies all those things. One, wherever the Quran disagrees, it's basically, can you reconcile the Quran with the Bible? Or do you just have to call it a contradiction? And if you call it a contradiction, yeah. if you call it a con contradiction, then you could go the route that you go and say, well, maybe God revealed contradictory things, and He has some reason for doing that to make these different groups. Mm -hmm. You could go that route. But another possibility is going to be that Muhammad is a false prophet who's sent to lead yeah. people away from from the truth. And so, uh, so here again, it's good. You you can say, you know, I'm going to take it on a leap of faith that the Quran got this right, and you know, the other other scriptures. God had a reason for revealing something different. You can do that, but is in terms of taking these leaps of faith, it, it, it shouldn't just be a leap of faith when you have no reason at all. It's you were the one going to the Bible saying, hey, you know, the Bible, you know, I, I'm drawing evidence from Isaiah 42 and from uh, and from the covenant with, with Ishmael. And then we take a closer look and those aren't actually evident. Those aren't actually good arguments for Muhammad. In fact, it, it's just the opposite. If you read those passages, they go against uh, they go against yeah. Islam, Islamic theology, and so on. So, so the point here is, if you want to say I'm going to still believe in Muhammad and that God has reasons for these, you know, for these differences and so on, it should still be based on I have all of these good reasons to believe in Muhammad, and therefore, if I see some difficulty elsewhere, well, that's no problem because I have all this good evidence for Muhammad. 
The problem yeah. is once we started taking a look at your arguments for Muhammad, they didn't turn out very well. So uh, you, you said you, you mentioned you wouldn't mind coming on um, at a different time. Um, yeah, you're you're welcome on here anytime. You're the you're the sort of person we don't mind we we, we yeah. don't mind having a discussion with, right? You're yeah. not. You're I not, love you're having not, conversations. Like yeah, you're this not you're not shouting people down. You can you can even yeah. bring a friend if you want to come on with uh mm. with uh with uh you know a Muslim apologist or a sheikh or something like that. You're welcome to to come on and yeah. and have that discussion. Uh, but but uh, Sam, get, let me Sam, why don't you go ahead and, and share your thoughts? Then uh, Issa yeah. can can share his final thoughts, and then uh, we might take a comment or two and, yeah. and then we'll. No, all I want to just reinforce what you said. Just because the Quran agrees with the Bible in certain areas, you don't ignore the fact that the Quran contradicts the Bible in major areas, such as Jesus being God in the flesh, the eternal Son, the creator of all things, the Savior, who reigns as King of kings and Lord of lords. So don't keep focusing on the similarity, because if I do that, I'm going to end up becoming a Mormon, or I'm going to become an Ahmadiyya, because the Mormons also agree a lot with the Bible, but contradict the Bible. So that means if I apply what you're doing, just focusing similarities, let me become a Mormon. Maybe I can also become <clears throat> a follower of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, who came after Muhammad, claimed to be the return of the Messiah, and said he was a prophet in the Messiah, and yet he said he believed in the Quran. He said all of the Quran is true. Mm -hmm. This is not how you arrive at truth, because just because I agree with you on one point, but if I contradict you on these other points that are crucial, that's when you're going to have to start thinking, is this man really a prophet or was he deceived and he's deceiving me? Because he said the Bible is true, but the Bible doesn't say the Quran is true. The Quran appeals to the Bible. The Bible doesn't appeal to the Quran. So you're mm -hmm. stuck with the Bible. But that's all I would say. Okay. Yeah. And thank you for, for that. So I guess, I mean, I'll do my like conclusion if, if, if that's what you want to call it. Uh, like I said, I mean, uh, if we ever want to do this again, I, I'm definitely, uh, I will definitely come back on here. Um, I like how we, we, we talked, and now because of the previous debates I've watched, that I, I noticed there was a lot of yelling back and forth, and I definitely was not prepared to do that. <laughs> but uh, in terms of uh, um, what we talked about, uh, if I, I, I don't want to leave you with any false, uh, uh, anything false that, that that you may think happened for me. This conversation was was very uh, good, but in terms of of my faith, I and it's not and nothing against you, I. I do not feel like my faith was shaken in a ma in a major way. All right, and, that, and again, that has nothing to do with you guys. You guys, I mean, I love how you guys are. You guys, you know, just because somebody says something, you want to investigate, right? That's very good, right? And I, 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 you guys should be proud of that. But in terms of uh, in terms of like my faith, uh, if I'm being completely honest, it, it wasn't shook in, in in a major way. Uh, um, and I think that's just main, the main reason because when I when I have faith in something. It's very hard for it to be for, to be broken, even with with the facts you you pulled. It's more so uh, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it's 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 just it's a matter of, and I'm sure you all you all can uh, agree with exactly what I'm saying. It, it's it's faith. It's it's just something that that's in here that I can't explain. That when I uh, you know the prayers, the five daily prayers, they they're calming, right? It's just the Quran recitation. It's it's calming. It's just everything about it. It just appeals to me, and I know it's hard for uh, you know everyone to understand that. And the, you know, I I just want to leave it with uh, with the fact that you know we even though we disagree, we we shouldn't let our differences uh, divide us, right? We should we should every day we should work towards the relationship between Christian and Muslims, and I think it's very important this conversation now and anyone who's watching to understand that uh, our differences may be big, but at the end of the day. We're all people of faith, and I think we should we should celebrate that. And I think we should continue to have discussions like this. And uh, I'm I'm definitely uh, blessed to be on here, especially on today. Today's a day of uh, Arafah, which is an important day for us. Uh, and I think I'm just uh, grateful to be able to be here. That's that's what I will leave it at. Thank you. All right, and uh, I'll just read one comment, and then we'll go ahead and close out. I'll read one comment from a, a critic of this entire discussion. Uh, Muhammad Akib said. David Wood and that red guy. I don't know why he's calling sure. Sam red. Sam's not red at all. Uh, um, yeah, you're oh. you're the re you're the red guy here because uh, you haven't. It's not because he's red, ladies and gentlemen. He's got a red. He's got a red lamp. And a red light. Right here. Uh, <laughs> but he says uh, David Wood and that red guy can't face experts. So now they are trying to make new reverts skeptical who are still learning. Shame on you. Uh, I'll point out. I'll point out two things. Um, one, 
one <laughs> Sam just Sam just had a had a discussion with an expert, right? We have invited all of the world's experts on here with us. What we said was uh, any level. If you want to, you know, if you're if you're a, a new Muslim or not a scholar, we're we're happy to have a discussion on any points you want to address about Muhammad. And if you're a scholar, you're welcome on here for a discussion as well. Yep. So I don't know why you'd have a problem with that when, you know, I see so many videos of, uh, you know, like Muslim apologists converting kids on the streets of, of Great Britain and so on. So I don't know why you'd have a problem with that. But apart from that, apart from that, gosh, it seems like 90% of Zakir Naik videos are Zakir Naik destroys Hindu challenger, where it's just it's random people coming up and challenging him at a microphone. And then there are people no one's ever heard of. Um, we don't know how long they've believed what they believed, and Zucker Naik just, you know, uses his rhetoric to to overwhelm them and destroy them, and then then you get these titles: Zucker Naik destroys Christian man, Zucker Naik destroys owns blah blah blah. Uh, Muslims, as far as just consistency is concerned, why do you think it's great if Zucker Naik, whom many of you consider your top apologist, has nothing but discussions with people who aren't actual debaters. Why do you think that's perfectly fine and noble when Zakir Naik won't face anyone who's actually an experienced debater when, as we've seen, we are willing to face experienced debaters, but we're also willing to have discussion. So basically, why the hypocrisy? Why can't we have a discussion with a Muslim who wants to have discussion, but Zakir Naik can have a bunch of discussions with people who want to challenge him. They're going up to the mic to challenge him. Why shouldn't he say no then? Why shouldn't he say no? I can't have this discussion with you. You're not. You're not at my level. Zakir Naik. Notice, Zakir Naik does not tell random Christians and Hindus who come up to the mic. He does not tell them, "Up, oh, you're not. You're not fit to be up here asking me this question." He only says that to actual debaters and scholars. He says, "Nope, you're not fit to discuss it with me. I'm going to go have discussions with people uh, who, who who clearly haven't studied these issues before." So, guys, just looking for consistency here. We have nothing but respect for Isa for coming on here, discussing his uh, discussing his beliefs, putting forward his arguments, putting them uh, putting them out there to see how well they stand up to scrutiny. And I would I would guess that he's gonna you know he's he's going to continue he's going to continue examining these uh, these these beliefs and continue looking for the reasons that he has to support his faith. And so, guys, that's a. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why Muhammad Akib would look at yeah. this as as bad and, and dishonorable. And Muhammad, why does he call? Yeah, why Muhammad, do you call? Muhammad Akib, call. contact us. Yeah, yeah, if you're if you're the why expert we? here, we're happy to have a discussion. Dave, let me just confirm. It's right there on my YouTube channel. Several days ago, after the debate with Shuaib, a Muslim called me from UK and go listen to it. I was super gentle, and I told him because he couldn't answer basic questions, and I said, look. I, I don't want to match you because that's not what I want to do. And let me be honest, and I say this with gentleness, respect. You, you haven't studied Islam enough. Don't you think maybe we shouldn't have this dialogue? You need some time to prepare? He goes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I go, so let's just end it because I'm not interested in taking someone and bashing him. Go back and study. And when you feel that you're ready, come back to me because I don't want to be using you as, as like trophy. He goes, thank you very much. I go, take care. May God guide you. I'm not in. I don't like to debate people who don't know their religion. Yeah. But if someone wants to dialogue, I, okay, let's dialogue. I'm not putting a gun to someone's head. Yep. So that's Zachary Naik. That's not me or David Wood. Yep. All right. Uh, thanks to Isa and Sam for being here. Thanks to everyone for watching. And I believe tomorrow night we'll be on uh, with a Muslim who wants to talk about. Um, Muhammad's character and wants to argue that Muhammad is actually a, a good uh, good moral example and that he what he didn't promote violence. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. Indeed. Thanks right. everyone Thank for joining you, us. Yeah. Catch everyone later. Yeah. God, God bless. bless.